and all of that. I will be here, but silent. Hog champ. Wonderful. Thanks. We are now live, and Discord's muted on the stream. So how is everyone today? Mood. <laughs> Head hats. Uh, you feel unconscious after that? What? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, if you didn't. Yeah, now I'm concerned. Ahamkara, a wish dragon. I've never heard of that before, but it sounds really cool. The thing is, you have to be very precise with your wish, otherwise it will give you a curse. So it's like a monk, it's the monkey's paw situation, basically. It's pretty much that, except you can have an infinite amount of wishes rather than five fingers. Are you? Well, four fingers and a thumb. Oh. 
By the way, Cosmo, I went ahead and got you a month subscription for World 20, so I hope that went through. It should give you some more I options and stuff. I just saw that right now. Lulz, you gotta stop spending money on us. <laughs> it's like six bucks, and how often do we get to play World, use World 20 anyway? Thank you. I, I appreciate it so much. All right. Just be glad I didn't give you bowls get free. <laughs> uh, mm, the amount. Uh. Is that a challenge? Are we gonna get Baldur's Gate now and play it as a party? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. I need an excuse. I want that. I want, I want that. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh my god, we totally should. <laughs> Can I do for you, Ms. Uh, uh Did you forget to put uh, the redeem for uh, for the idol version? No, I didn't put it in because it won't be useful this stream. Um, yes, it anything will. That's, <laughs> anything that's going to be like a big collab like this one is probably not going to be the the time and place for it. Oh, okay, sure. It sounds like a challenge. <laughs> no, no disappointment Suffer. at all. <laughs> Suffer. I am I am feeling great. I am not sad and and disappointed at all. Oh. <laughs> oh. I incidentally two minutes and thirty seconds left. Are you? Oh. Uh, three minutes thirty four. I should change my theory this mess with everybody. <laughs> In their placements. Hey, I think this may please everyone. Ayo, Fox Loaf. Fox Loaf. Fox yes. Loaf. Oh. oh yeah, familiar is up here wanting the second dinner. Um, <laughs> second dinner is is a different time for you, kiddo. Second dinner happens during first break. You see. Ah. Uh. Did you know Baldur's Gate 3 actually won Game of the Year in those uh, Game Award things? I think yes. they did anyway. Yes. As what they rightfully did. deserved. They, Game of the they won, Century or something. They won nine awards. Larian Studios is just really, are eat, is so really, re really eating things up lately. I hope they remain a good, a good uh, game developer for years to come. They've been around for a while too. Yeah. And I hope that Neil Newbin wins best performance as a starring because he deserves it. Yeah, no kidding. For sure. No offense to no offense to Ben Star, he did a great performance as well, but the thing is a starring has so much more depth. For sure, definitely. And I One think minute he remaining. More. Uh just under two minutes for me. <laughs> Hey night, Gordino. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> and in addition, also in um, also in Destiny Two, they just revealed after five years the final fifteenth wish. Are you? Yeah, five years. <laughs> Um, but we probably won't cover what it is until t well, until the season starts, which is literally in a couple of weeks' time. Season of the Wish. Wait a minute, is that Timmy I'm just going to say, card it! <laughs> Did you make this yourself, Cosmo? Did who make what oneself? This map. Yes. Oh, oh man, I'm really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. uh, speaking of, uh, starting up the audio for Hello, us. Hello, in... everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> this map is featured in a lot of lore. I guess it must. It would be a waste to not use this map. A uh, map this detailed Hi, in your personal lore. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lost uh, Time amazing. Show. 
Okay. Oh. And, and of course, to uh, all of the other things that are happening as well. Now then, everybody, sh let's get started, shall we? Um, hi, everybody. Uh, for for everyone who is is at all of the respective broadcasts, it's great to see you all here. We are uh, <laughs> sitting in our correct places now, uh, in such a manner that we can begin a a little exam we haven't had one in quite a while and i realized that if i wanted to get my grades done by the end of the semester i needed to make sure that i could tell how my students were doing <laughs> so uh why don't we go ahead and uh make sure that everyone knows who everyone is starting over with miss lilith miss lilith who are you and what do you do uh i'm lilith Balmira. i'm a vtuber i stream stuff Whatever I feel like in that particular day. <laughs> Amazing. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Lilith, I'm a very boring person, since... okay? <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. Uh, I, I do think that it's been a little while since we've uh, had any exams whatsoever, but you have been in a few of the exams so far, so uh, I yeah. feel like maybe the 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 group here will be pretty solidly ready for this exam but just in case good luck next up we have mm -hmm. uh lulz lulz hello who are you what do you do hi i'm lulz the meme poster ai our ai uh i do mostly cyberpunk content i've just recently been got off a of hiatus and have been slowly working my way back into regular streaming uh so it's it's probably uh, very convenient that the most recent streams have been collabs with some of my uh, best VTuber friends here. Uh, and we're, oh, of course, yeah. we are playing a genre cl very close to my heart, survival horror. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. We're glad to have you back, Lulz. Uh, even though there have been some color and number combinations that may have been popping up here and there that I'm a little worried about. Oh, th there oh, was we'll more see. to come. <laughs> oh, boy. Stares directly into the camera. Uh, next up is Mecca. Mecca, who are you? What do you do? Hello, everyone. I am Mecca. I am the Cyber Demon. I do priority content. I play Destiny 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Bold Escape 3, Warframe, Final Fantasy 14. Again, I'm just pretty RPGs. That's most what I'm both most being known for. Destiny 2 is pretty much my biggest content, considering I get more views for that. But I'm going to be focusing more on Warframe, since obviously Nightwave is going to be ending soon, and I haven't really reached rank 30 on that. Oh boy. <laughs> and then I've got the next season, Season of the Bush, coming up. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I wish you the best of luck on your progress in Warframe. I am to understand that it is going to be an exceptional setup there. Uh, and it's always interesting to see what you've got going on for it, Mecca. So, welcome back to the classroom. Uh, next up, Sister Ageha. Who are you? What do you do? Hello, my name is Ageha Verkor, your mid-tier cleric. Remember, if you need a white mage, I need you to get hurt. I am typically running a clinic just outside of the your local adventurer's guild. Um, I'm definitely not breaking kneecaps with my giant hammer, whose name is Love Tap. <laughs> Uh, and the current lineup <laughs> is pretty much back-to-back -back Baldur's Gate with Storyteller NPC, also known as Chuffy, the Australian. We're having a grand old time, uh, and she makes the game bug out immensely, constantly, always, <laughs> forever. There's always something wrong. She's always sequence-breaking. Uh, it's a great time. I love when you can sequence break a game. It is very funny that way. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're glad yes. to have you back also as well, Sister Ageha, who has gone for a little while, but is back now. Mm. I took a brief break, but I'm back and better than ever, and I'm ready to break legs. I mean, mend broken bones. Break all yeah. of my legs. La Mal. Sister Ageha, <laughs> maybe we gotta, you know what, uh, and then finally, Ms. Aoi. <laughs> Welcome back. How are you? Who are you? What do you do? Hi, uh, I'm a penguin. <laughs> Hi, best <laughs> penguin. We love to see it. Yes, so I'm a penguin and I like playing music. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, today I had my last stream before going on break because I need to get my adult feathers. And this is a lot of work Ooh. and a lot of energy. So we're taking a short break just to get ready for the coming of age ceremony in a few weeks. Yes. Wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> that seems like it's going to be quite a lot of fun. We'll see how that turns out for you then. 
I'm very excited that uh, that is a possibility that we will be able to see uh, when it is finished. So then, uh, oh, and then of course that leaves me, I'm, I'm also here. Uh, my name is Cosmo Bergamot, I'm the Dean of the School of Conjuration here at the Teme Belt Royal Academy for the Metaphysical Arts. And I am uh, going to be running the exam for everyone today. You may also hear in the background my dear familiar, familiar, who is uh, rather demanding of the second dinner that she is an hour and a half early for. So, say hello, familiar. She refuses, not without the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, familiar. But anyway... Oh, oh, now, now she is up in the chair. All right. So with this uh, all on the table, then, is everybody ready to get started today? Of course not. <laughs> I am ready to die. I know. I know violently. I know I'm a small penguin. I'm definitely going to die first. I have not studied. Ah, it should be fine. It's a practical exam, not a not an exam testing your knowledge. You'll be all so fine and okay and dandy and everything. <laughs> then, let's begin. While the lecture hall has been filled with students, it's been a while since this configuration of runes and sigils was drawn on the floor. Students who are there to observe the exam have posted up in the amphitheater-like seats around the central circle, some with food and drink and some ready to take copious notes. So, dear students, today it's time to do some thinking on our feet. The exam today will put our lovely examinees into a situation where they'll need all of their wits to survive. I mean, uh, pass with a good grade, of course. Are you all ready? Oh, and, uh, of course. And the professor not. looks over to see the five of you. <laughs> Still not ready. <laughs> Uh, are we going to be working in groups, Professor? The group that you see, the, the, the five of you here, who are our representative test takers, will be your group. I'm sure that you will be able to work relatively well together. I've seen uh, a decent sort of progression of work with this group before and with other pieces of this group in different configurations, so I trust that it will be great. The so... professor leans down and begins to finish the last sigil with a piece of crystalline chalk and grins. So I'm not supposed to hurt them. The Bowser amiibo just starts shaking on its desk like mischievously. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like sitting on the edge of the the professor's desk and with like a little tiny shake it sort of inobtrusively falls down onto the very edge of the circle. <laughs> I expect to see exceptional work from all of you. He begins, but the circle flashes brightly. And suddenly there is a heavy musty Silence. The professor is gone. The other students oh. are gone. The stained glass window in the north wall has been broken. The carpet is torn up, moldy, shredded. The thick wooden door to the lecture hall hangs lopsidedly on its hinges propped up and barricaded with empty and broken desks and chairs. In the light streaming through the shattered window, a dust hangs thickly in the air. It has been days since you've had a chance to rest. Your tech is low on charge. Your mana levels are low. Your ammunition is running out. You've managed to spend a somewhat peaceful night in the ruins of the Conjuration Tower, the first in a long time, and shared your provisions to the tune of an adequate meal. For once, you're rested, but that's about all you've got going for you. Last night, you saw them outside, 
moving in a swarm, a pack, organized in the way that bees are organized. Strange shapes, geometric and simple, but with eyes and mouths. Hungry mouths. You know where their queen is, or at least you think you do. Those things keep dragging everything organic that they find down under the north dormitory in a massive hole. A sinkhole near the transmutation tower. Something's coming. You can hear it, clunking and clattering up the stairway outside the door. A thud against the old door, a shifting of wood on stone. Another thud. They're here. You are in the Conjuration Tower Lecture Hall, on the 14th story. When the deck runs out, so does your luck. Sister Ageha, what suit have you chosen to represent yourself? I am represented by the suit of clubs. Clubs, blunt and brutal. Lulz, what about you? I have chosen diamonds for my suit. Clever and strange. Mecca? Spades. Sharp and quick. Miss Aoi? Uh... <laughs> oh, um, um, um. Aoi's. Oh. Ooh. Diamonds, clever and strange. And Miss Lilith. Uh, hearts. Hearts, kind and wise. Two choices that I was sort of not expecting there, but well done. <laughs> At the beginning of the game, I will give to each of you five cards. You may choose any of them to put face up, and they will act as your edge. Equipment, or abilities, or things that you can use in a situation. Any that you continue, or that you keep in your hand and don't show, are your secrets. Last ditch efforts. Something that you don't want the others to know about. Let's deal some cards. We would like five cards to Sister Ageha, to Lulz, to Mecca, to Aoi, and to... where did... L Lilith, where did you go? You should be on this list. Where are you? Are you down at the bottom of the list and I just can't see it? L I there you are. Excellent. And there we go. Each of you should have five cards. Og. You may choose those and uh, keep them in your hand or put them face up on the table. Oh. From a technical yeah. standpoint. Uh, when we change maps, I don't know if they will stay on that map or on the previous map. So if they do, we'll have to make sure that we move them correctly because the card system in Roll20 is very slightly jank. Okay, so just to confirm, these cards can only be used once, right? The edges that are face up are things that can, in theory, be used more than once. When you use an edge, it turns face down, but it recharges, so to speak, if you use a secret. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so... So when you make yourself vulnerable, maybe you get your things back. I see. Hey. Okay. Is it better or lower is hot better, or...? Oh! Your edges would probably best be served being a high number. That makes sense. Ms. Uh, okay. I don't feel like yeah. actually... 
Okay, so oh, how do I? I don't know how you. Um, yeah, how are how are we to tell you, whose how, card is whose? Yeah, how do you? Yeah, I, it it may be that we choose locations on the map, perhaps for them. Um, well, I call evocation. <laughs> oh, uh, abjuration. I don't. Excellent. I have so, the library. Oh, you're putting you it on the map. Out? Okay. I want the library. No, you, uh, you can take the library if you'd like. But someone uh, to put uh, their cards to there. I don't, there's uh, no one over the library. Ew. Oh, there's three. There's, there's like four different libraries. libraries. <laughs> there's four libraries. Yeah, there's, yes. there's quite a few. Uh, there's put, a uh, wizard school after all. I'll put mine over the divination school. Oh, uh, there's oh, you know two, what we can do. right? Okay, I'll just put it uh, in the biggest building, and then you know it's mine because I'm the smallest, so it makes sense. I have the biggest building. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I need to ask because this depends on the person GMing. In your in this, for the purposes of this um, game, is Joker a high card or a low card? For the purposes of this game, Joker is a high card. Excellent. Uh, it counts as a fourteen, one step above a king. Excellent. Um, of any suit or. No suit. Uh, that one, that one is an a, a any suit. Okay. There are only two of them in the deck, and they are pop. They're very powerful for a reason. Can you okay, explain? Okay, so anything that stays in our hands is our secrets. Correct. Okay. Uh, can you explain the significance of choosing a card that matches our suit? Really quick, one more time. Absolutely. So. When we make a check in this game, mm -hmm. I will draw a card. I'll set a, a difficulty class, and then I will draw a card to see whether it beats that thing. If the card I draw meets or beats the number that I've set, then you succeed at the check. If it does not meet or beat that number, then you fail at the check. If the card I draw is your suit and succeeds, it's a critical success. Mm -hmm. If the card I draw is your suit but fails, it's a critical failure. Oh, I didn't realize uh, that part. Question. Is, yes. uh, is, the, is it one or is it ace? Uh, ace is a one. Okay, okay, so it's the worst card. All right. Yes. Good it's enough. the lowest number, yes. Amazing. This I is... was literally about to ask about that, because obviously, again, aces can be high and low, especially when it comes to, like, blackjack. And... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and yeah, a lot of gambling playing. games. Uh, but in this yeah. case, they are low cards. Okay. Okay. Good so, Um. Uh, okay, is that so... I, want? I think... Generally, this means it's better to have more secrets than edges, or do I have that backwards? If you have a fewer edges, then you essentially have fewer hit points, as it were. Edge counts as your health, as well as it counts as your equipment. When you have no edges and you receive damage, you, uh... You die. Oh my god. <laughs> I did not want to be a glass can in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the cards that you're putting face up, I'm a glass can in every the other game. Putting face up on the table are ones that you can use instead of one of the ones that I have drawn. So uh, you who are on the evocation tower, uh, you have put down cards that are relatively low. It might actually behoove you to put down higher cards instead if they exist. Um, here's and then keep the, the lower the cards as. <laughs> Oh no! And that I drew. <laughs> oh no! Oh, um, you drew well, a straight. You drew a straight flush. <laughs> you win. <laughs> oh, oh, this Boy, is terrible. Okay, so we're we're killing it today. All right, excellent. <laughs> we're killing it. What? So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, we're gonna die. Womp. Womp. You Ow. hear, outside of that door, off its hinges, barely staying up, only there because of the barricade that you put there in the night previous. Something is outside. 
and it wants in. So, on, my dear students... I've just got two cards out. Do I need to put two cards out or cap? No, you can have as many as, or as few as you like, so long as you have at least one. I, I guess, actually, okay. you can theoretically have zero out if you want to. Eh. Mm, fair enough. Just asking. Because so yeah, everyone I else think... take two out and... Excellent. Yeah, I think that was just uh, the choice that was made. But, my dear students, something's outside. What do you do? Oh, you know I'm readying my hammer. Your trusty hammer love tap is in your hand. Um, we actually... I'd forgotten about this. You should tell me what each of your edges are, what they, what they represent. Um, so, Sister Ageha, one of your edges might be Love Tap, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll, we'll go through really quickly then. Sister Ageha, what are your edges there? Um, the Four of Clubs is Love Tap. Great. The Five of Diamonds um, is the couple of levels that I have in Cleric. Uh, so, that would be spells, mostly Cleric Excellent. spells. Um, and the Three of Hearts uh, is representative of my levels in Barbarian. That's just my pure strength. Okay, excellent. So spellcasting, strength, and a big hammer. What about you, Lulz? I see that you've got a Joker and a King out. Uh, the King is going to be an enormous die katana that is literally strapped to my back. <laughs> excellent. The Joker is going to be the quad shotgun from Doom, essentially. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Uh, hey, Mecca, what about you? What are your edges? Uh, right, so I have the Eight of Diamonds. That's going to be my cannon that's in my cybernetic arm. Excellent. And the, the Queen of, of Spades is the... San Deviston. Which is a performing... large weapon? Oh. No, it is a cyberware, which allows me to slow down time. Oh, excellent. I like that. Hence okay. Why, hence why I thought Queen of Hearts, it'd be best to use that. Because obviously it's a high-risk cyberware. That makes sense. Wonderful. Ms. Mm. Aoi, what are your edges? Um, so the seven of a uh, diamond is my voice. Nice. And the six, uh, is, uh, like, um, uh, a set of lights, uh, throwing knife. Ooh, excellent. Wonderful. Which leaves us with Ms. Lilith. What are your edges? Um... So Jack is my dog. Excellent. And the king is my magic. Okay. Wonderful. This works out excellently. So... I really thought Aoi was going to say that her edges were her sweetness and her cuteness. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so do you want me to become a, barba a barbarian if I lose everything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Oh, amazing. Night Gardenia over in the classroom says if anyone doesn't know what to do with their edges, I think, quote, worried friend knight bursts into game to save you. Please. By all means, do so. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, speaking of what you can do while you are in the classroom, when someone makes a good choice or does a good bit of role playing, you can use the exclamation point good tech, er, command in the chat to give them an extra point. And if someone does something that you disapprove of, you can do exclamation point bad. Uh, you can also check the bad. score. No, certainly not. You can also check the score with exclamation point score whenever you'd like. Should we... But in the mean... 
should we secretly, obviously, ahead of time, um, assign our secrets as well? Should they stand for something in particular? No, because you don't get to choose what those secrets are. Your colleagues do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, um, for the purposes of making sure that this continues to be at least as, as lore-neutral as possible, any secrets that are revealed about any of the players during this game may or may not be actually canon secrets, and may only be canon to the version of them that is in the exam right now. <laughs> I'm going to twist them somehow to make them canon. <laughs> Amazing. It's so, happened before. Uh, now, we've, <laughs> we've got everything all set up then. The door begins to buckle. It seems that whatever's behind it is just about to really come right through. Well, You're on the 14th you have floor a plan. of the store. I have a hammer. Go on. I'm sorry, what? This is not... I'm looking to everyone and saying, if any of you have a plan, I have a hammer. This is not a good day to die. Uh, says Lols in the corner, who for some reason has... In this version, it has materialized a very, very long, long coat. That's, in, that's current, it's full of tatters. Um, for some reason, they... Look slightly different in the sense that not only do they wear the long wear a long coat, but they just have this weird edginess to them that is kind of uncomfortable in the way they're talking. Oh, did we get edgy lols this time around? Excellent. <laughs> this is not a great great a great day to die. <laughs> and then he they like take out this obnoxiously long dai katana. Yes, a dai a, those really long katanas. But I'll make an exception. For, for them, right? For them. Please say for them. No promises. Okay. <laughs> the door bursts down, slams down onto the ground, and the dust in the air is stirred. As from the outside corridor, dark now, none of the magic torches or the lanterns are lit, you see... Eyes. Hundreds of little pinprick eyes. And they begin to swarm inside. You've seen them last night. You'd seen them before, certainly. But last night was the first time that you got just the scope of how many there are. How they act in a group. They're strange geometric shapes uh, uh solids uh, this one is like a triangular prism this one is a rhombocubactahedron this one is a like a five-sided like awkwardly shaped side on the edge of a, a a sphere these just strange very simplistic looking shapes hard edges black lines that edge around them with bulging distended eyeballs and mouths with teeth and they begin to pile inside there are far too many what do you do jump out the window <laughs> Mecca, you look oh, over God. at the stained okay. glass window and take one, two bounds and jump. You are on the 14th floor. Oh my God. <laughs> or you were a moment ago. Uh. So everyone else, you see as Mecca looks over and then just boom, boom, shoof breaks through the, like, little bit of what remaining glass is there and begins to plunge downwards. Now, Mecca, we'll get to you in a moment. <laughs> everyone else, what do you do? Um, 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 <laughs> can I... <laughs> the, um, I would love 
uh, if I could uh, cast one of one of my few spells, if I have any mana to cast any spells on Mecha before uh, before they hit the bottom. What kind of spell would you like to cast? Now remember, you may be a Dungeons oh, and Dragons character outside, but in this but world, here. your magic might be a little different. So what kind of magic would you like to try to do? No, even, even according to my source material, I wouldn't have been able to do it because it's touch. Oh. I Oop. forgot, so I'm going to very dramatically, like, fly over to the window and reach out and go, no! <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> also, I believe we just lost Owie in the, uh, Royal 20. It does seem like Ms. Owie is, uh, disconnected from Roll20. There she is. And is back oh, now. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it was still there, yeah. but just it, it, I don't know, it had a red message. You, you've been disconnected. Oh, okay. Ah, one of those. Oh. Yeah, Roll20 yeah. is temperamental sometimes. Uh, okay, so, uh, how about Lulz and Ms. Owie and Ms. Lilith? Um... Mecca just jumped out the window. <laughs> Lol says and or says or Lol receives this and says of all the times to not pack my grappling hook or my jet pack <laughs> I thought I would be the one that is suicidal today uh they run over to the mirror or not the mirror to the stained glass window to look down to see what has befallen uh Mecca Okay, Ms. Aoi, Ms. Lilith. Um. Um. And this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, I want to start singing. <laughs> To the monsters. Oh. So I just look at look at all the eyes, and the the, the penguin eyes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I, I I you you use the word, but I I don't know it, so I don't know what it means. <clears throat> sort of like bulging, um, disgustingly weird outside of the body style eyes. All right. So I I I'm just looking at all of them, and I I start singing like a. Like a lullaby. Ooh. Are you? Interesting. Ms. Owie, you take a deep breath and your mind flicks through all the songs that you can process right now. And you start to pick one of them, but you realize, I've forgotten the lyrics. You start the next, no, the melody is wrong, it's too, too quick. And you finally find one. You open your mouth and begin to sing. Mecca, you jumped from the 14th story of the Conjuration Tower. I'm going to draw for us now, and uh, <laughs> this will be the first check of the game. For reference, the thresholds for difficulty are 5 for something simple, 8 for something difficult, or a queen for something really dangerous or taxing. We're going to set the okay. difficulty for this one at a 10. So, here's our draw. It's a jack! Nice. Look at that. Lucky. Incredible. All right. Amazing, amazing. Mecca, you're plummeting. You've jumped out this window, and you're now going down head first. What saves you from splashing into the ground like a tin can full of beans? Well, this is where the Sun Devil Stone comes into play. I activate that and basically I start grappling onto the wall. So obviously then I'm slowing down time for myself so then I can latch onto the wall to then claw my way down the tower without basically mitigating damage to only my hands and my feet. 
You you Excellent. basically you forcibly spider monkey your way down. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. That's actually really cool. <laughs> uh, that is very cool. That's that's sick. So here's the scene. Door comes in. Weird shapes with eyes start coming in. Mecha, shoof, through the window starts falling. Uh, uh, Ageha runs over. Mecha, no! Aoi starts doing the the lullaby, and then you hear. I love these sound effects. <laughs> Ageha, as you look out, you watch as somehow. Mecha's movements become so precise and quick that they're almost impossible to 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 justify in your head. But they manage to like dig a hand into the stone, dig a a, a boot into the side of it, and just sort of like bury admittedly quickly, perhaps more quickly than you would enjoy yourself, uh, slide and, and, and like, slash into the stone itself down to the bottom with the cybernetic hand in a boot. And Mecha, you down onto the ground. When you look around, it's maybe, like, early morning. You would say 7, 7.30 or so. At this time of day, the campus normally would be bustling with students going to and from the dormitories up into the student union building or going out to one of their earlier classes. But today, there is nothing. The entire grounds are desolate. Buildings have been torn to pieces. There are walls that have been broken down, both coming inwards and outwards. Most of the glass is shattered. But there are no indications that anyone has been here for a while. Except for the strange erratic prints of these shapes that have been scouring the campus. You are down at the bottom. Your colleagues are way up at the top. Speaking of colleagues, Miss Aoi, you begin to sing a lullaby. You know how to do this. This is an easy thing for you. So we will say that this one is difficulty seven to try to keep the attention of the monsters. Okay. And on the student union, it's an ace. <laughs> oh. You begin to sing. And normally, this would, this would work. You've used your, your enchanting voice many times before, but it seems maybe these creatures don't have ears. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes and a mouth. But no ears. Can I? They begin to approach. Some of them sort of walking on their edges, some of them bouncing forward. It's almost comical if you were looking at it from a position where you did not know that if they got a hold of you, they would bring the pieces of you that they took down to their queen. The pieces of you? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, does that mean I die? <laughs> no, no. This one, you you tried to use your voice ability to do something, and it didn't work this time. Um, okay. so you didn't gain any benefits from it. No, no, no. I will let you know if you are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very uh, I'm very thankful for you for, for you telling me when I die <laughs> <laughs> um can I like make a bunch of light I don't see any reason why not that is a super easy spell for you your your infernal magic is for for your skill this type of magic is very easy you reach up and what does the what does the magic look like when you make your light? Um, it 
Can I just like ears in my hand? <laughs> like excellent. Like starts out small, then grows bigger. As I channel more magic into it. Lilith, you put your hand up and a small moat of light begins to just flicker into it and then grow and grow and grow. And now you can see the the lecture hall is completely illuminated now. And you see on the inside the podium where the professor was standing only moments, well, days, months perhaps ago, is toppled over. The seats in the, the amphitheater all empty, many of them broken. And you see these creatures, each of them a sort of like a, a bright, oversaturated monocolor. This one is a, like a, a triangle and it's bright green. This one is like a weird circle with a point on one end of it and it's pink. They are almost childish. But they do have mouths full of teeth and murderous intent. Lulz? Ageha, have we got anything? Who are the Other creatures? Than just start smashing? <laughs> <laughs> Who are the I creatures you could? Um, closest to you right now? Uh, the cinematic setup is such that the four of you made like uh, are making like a little arc in front of where the door is, so they are coming sort of in just y'all four's general direction. I see. Um, Sister Ageha, do you want to start smashing? I would love to start smashing. <laughs> All right. Each I... of these creatures is maybe the size of like a a tractor tire at biggest, maybe like a meter and a half tall, all the way down to a few inches. It seems that they are relatively varied in their size. They're the the horde that is there in front of you ranges from like basketball size up to bookshelf sized. Bruh. What I would like to do, if allowed, um, is try and give these things a double whammy by raising up and casting spiritual weapon first. Well, that should be simple yeah. enough. It's a second level spell. Yeah, I don't feel like that's super difficult for you. We'll make that one difficulty five. It is uh, the the possibility of failure. Wonderful. It is a ten of clubs. Uh, <gasps> Ms. Sister Ageha, aren't you aligned to clubs? Yes, I am. Then welcome to your first critical success. Are you? You reach into yourself for that moment, and as you bring your hammer up, what does your spiritual weapon look like? This is actually very interesting. I've never summoned my spiritual weapon before in front of an audience. Mm. For some reason, it is a bow. It is a bow whose wooden curve is actually made of twisting gnarled roots and blooming forget-me-nots. Are you? Ooh, interesting. Yeah, as you raise that hammer up, this sort of like shimmer and then a knitting together of the weave of magic as this bow takes form above you. And you take to smash in, it seems. Do you want to uh, direct any attacks in specific, or is this a let's clear a path type thing? It's very much a let's clear a path type thing. The spiritual weapon will essentially give cover fire while I'm playing golf with these little dudes uh, with <laughs> love tap and just swing back and forth to try and part the ocean. 
Oh yes, oh yes, excellent. With the combination of the light from Lilith and the cover fire from your forget-me-not bow, you are, you, you just sort of like stomp one foot forward and begin an arc of swing, and as your hammer contacts these things, they are strangely brittle almost, like wax. And you smash through one of them, and it just disintegrates into this kind of, like, pile of brightly colored shards onto the ground. You take another step forward, and it comes back. An arrow comes in from your bow and just pins another one down. And just, you begin clearing a path. There are a lot of them. But at this rate, there's a very good chance that you might be able to... Clear a path for your, your compatriots and yourself. And I will look back and I will yell at the top of my lungs, hurry before they fill in. Hurry? Like run or are you running or? That seems to be what Ageha wishes for the group to do. <laughs> no. Only cowards run from a fight, uh, Lol says, <laughs> because and he could tell that this form of them is does not like being upstaged by the by uh, Sister Aga. So they also find a space where they're not going to get sw hit by a Love Tap uh, <laughs> <laughs> to assist with the uh, clearing house, as it were. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Uh, you, with the two of you working together, this is not as big of a problem as it initially presented itself to be. You are... The, the four of you that are still up there, uh, thanks to this effort, are able to clear a path around yourselves enough to be able to escape from the lecture hall and begin the trek down the long staircase. Normally, when you come to the Conjuration Tower, there is a translocation enchantment that will take you to the room of your choice, but there is always a staircase that goes a big spiral up the center that branches out. And of course, that magic is currently gone. So you race down the stairs. The four of you together are able to push them off as they come up or manage to, to slice through four or five of them as they fall down from up above you. The light that Lilith is carrying is bright enough to illuminate the entirety of the spiral staircase as you go up and down. And you see... A boot, a book, a torn and crooked sort of uh, like wide brimmed flat cap. Indications that people were here, but not a single bit of anything living. Mecca, down outside, you hear the commotion of your party beginning the descent from way far up. And that sound seems to be not drawing much of, uh, of the attention of anything nearby. But you do see a single large shape. It's like a eight-sided... Like, like an octagon that's been stretched out like a pencil. Maybe a meter and a half thick by about four meters tall. And it seems to be kind of ambling, just a bounce and a bounce and a bounce. And then it stops. So frontiers. Go on. Trust me, there's an enemy in the frontiers that actually looks like that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes seem to swivel around the body, as though they are not actually connected to it, but rather are ter secondary portions of it. And they swivel around, and one of them stops on you. And there is a pause, and then... Oh, boom. 
boom, and it begins coming towards you. It's pretty big. You fought big things before. Until your partner, until your party gets here, you've got to find a way to deal with this thing. What would you like to do? I'm saying since it's set its eyes on me. What's the best option? Blind it. Cannon time. Not bad. Ho ho! Very good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you sort of like brace one foot back and point your arm and it turns into the cannon there. Uh, this is a relatively easy shot. Uh, the eye itself is about the size of a beach ball, so there's no way you could miss it. What does your gun sound like when you fire the cannon? You know the Gauss cannon from Doom 2016? That. <laughs> so a loud boy. <laughs> yes. Very good. Um, you who are descending the tower, making your way down, kicking them off of the edges and smashing and pushing, uh, you hear from outside just a kind of resounding <laughs> through the stone. Some of you recognize that sound. Um... It seems that whatever is happening outside, you're not the only ones that are uh, currently dealing with these creatures. Mecca, you <laughs> blast one of this thing's eyes, and it just is obliterated immediately in a sort <laughs> of shower of tiny little shards of what appear to be wax. Just poof! And the other eye detaches from the body and begins to kind of like spiral around it as though it were stuck in a kind of gravity well trying to find its place again. You think that you have managed to distract it for at least a little while. Party on the, the stairs. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> With that one, that's the second of two shots. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this one a difficulty five in order to get both of them. Okay. And on the student union, it is a four of hearts. <laughs> that is a miss. You uh -oh. begin your aim for that one, and then as you fire, the... What does your cannon fire? Is it a physical object, or is it some sort of energy weapon? Energy. Ah, yes. The, like, burst of sort of kinetic force that comes out of it seems to get, like whipped up in that gravity well as well and begins to orbit wildly around this thing. You're not sure if it's very fond of that idea, but now you can't get close either because you might get hit by your own cannon blast. And it sort of is now kind of bouncing erratically in different directions. There's a possibility that it might come after you. Party on the stairs, you reach yourselves down at the bottom of the staircase where the sort of reception area of the Conjuration Tower is. And there is here several different little teleportation circles that you would normally step onto in order to reach other places in the tower. Um, there's the one for the hall that you just came from. There's the one for, like, the research area. There is one that is completely destroyed that would normally take you to the professor's office. But the doors to the front of the tower are completely open, and one of them is off the hinges entirely. You see Mecca outside, sort of like dodging and rolling to get out of the way of what appears to be one of their own cannon blasts being <laughs> accidentally wielded by one of these creatures. And the horde that was chasing you begins to uh, find themselves close to the bottom of the, the staircase as well. Mecca, you see your party begin to stream out of the door of the tower. You all currently okay. find yourselves just here at south of the Conjuration Tower near the student dormitories. You know that the 
sinkhole that leads to where you expect the queen is, is over near the transmutation tower in this area here. You also know that from your experience, having tried to find a safe place, the divination, illusion, enchantment, and evocation towers, all four of them on the southern portion of the campus, have been almost completely destroyed. Oh. But many of the other buildings are still standing to some extent. So, with the party at least mostly back together, a swarm coming down the <clears throat> stairs and one large boy flailing erratically. What would you like to do? Shall we try to go to the administration building to get closer to where the queen is? But still find some kind of... Um, we definitely need work. cover, cover in cover, the plan. Yes. Yeah. You are right, small penguin. We must bunny hop. Link looks at the camera. <laughs> Our way <laughs> towards the <laughs> source <laughs> of the boss level. We don't jump, we slide on the snow uh, as penguins. So please respect how we, we, we do our movement. <laughs> yes, we will slide <laughs> our way Perfect. to the administration Amazing. building. <laughs> <laughs> All their, right. Their accent just gets more and more obnoxious as they continue to open their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Boy, oh boy. Um, so the five of you scramble now. Um, the, the, the horde that is starting to come out of the Conjuration building is very likely to follow you if they can keep your, your trail. Do you want to try to uh, escape from them and like lose them first, or do you want to just hightail it directly? How would you like to do it? Um, Maybe we can go through the library and go back the other side and hope uh, they will get lost in the bookshelves. Bookshelves. That is a very good plan. Uh, for my part, I would love to let the spiritual weapon trail behind. Um, like, instead of bringing it with us, leave it in place, giving that cover fire, and try and slow them down a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. As you have come out of the doors, like, you look back and the bow is, like, it is... Oh, uh, uh, thank you so much, Night Gardenia, for gifting a sub to Ms. Emmy. So Ms. Emmy now has their uh, tuition paid for the semester. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Uh, your bow, the string still vibrating, turns back and just begins firing another volley and another volley and another volley. And each time, one of the arrows pierces one of these things you see it just kind of like crumble and like it's it's almost familiar none of you can really put your finger exactly on what it looks like when these things fall apart but it's almost familiar and you're not sure why you've got some cover fire behind you so the plan then is to head through the library and into the administration then yes in hopes to lose the horde Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Excellent, then. You all move your way toward the library. Uh, a moment, please. Why can't I change us to the map that is here? Maybe if you want... right-click, or... That is what I expected, but because I have put it in a folder, it seems that we are not allowed to do that, huh? Hmm. Huh. Well. Hmm. We cannot... All right, well, that's awkward. Um, we're just going <laughs> to move this back up to the all pages, I suppose. Uh, and kaboom! <clears throat> we love the, library. the library. Oh, and boom. Everyone's cards should have been here, but did we not put them in the right place? 
Uh, it after might be halls. off. Yeah, it's. Oh, this is copy to place so a um, There we go. There we go. Yeah. Wonderful. I see it. So, yes. The I'm just library. The house name. <laughs> like That's why I, I labeled mine. <laughs> why did you do that? Uh, you can use the text cool. tool on the left. Magic and miracles. But the doors to the library are open, and as you pour inside, this is one of the libraries that is shared by the uh, conjuration and divination schools together. The northern part of the library here is mostly the conjuration stuff, so if this is how you have been studying, you've probably spent some time in this library before. But it's a little disheveled now. Uh, the shelves are either ransacked or tipped over. There are just like uh, shelves and tables and chairs and things strewn everywhere. Many of the shelves are still standing, many still have books on them, but there are difficulties in trying to move quickly through the library on account of how many things simply are everywhere. You also know that in the lower levels of this library, there is a vault of sorts uh, where some of the magical items and other artifacts that are associated with the conjuration and divination schools are currently kept for research purposes. This is, in fact, also where the archives are. You uh, might have come here to talk to Thelen, the archivist. You have a moment of thick quiet before you would expect something is going to follow you inside. What would you like to do? I've come here um. to shoot monsters and chew bubblegum, and right now, I think I could use a nice long stick of bubblegum. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I don't have bubblegum, but in case this goes from bad to worse, I can probably hand out a couple of death wards. Mm -hmm. I accidentally oh, interrupted okay. Lilith, my bad. Huh? Oh, I, I, I thought you were going to say something, my bad. Oh. I want to pile box in front of the, the, the entrance we just took. Just pile them like... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I mean, there are there are already piles and stacks of them. It is not difficult to sort of shove them in front of the, the entrance. Um, the doors are still there. Um, you can kind of push them to be mostly closed and then start barricading with the books relatively easily. This will probably buy you a little bit of time. If they, if they saw you go in here, this will be probably the, the entrance that they are going to try to take. <laughs> so you, whoa, whoa, the door sh shut and then start to pile the books up against it. It's good to know that they are not attracted to sound. Hmm. So you are in the library now, the research facility that uh, normally is again bustling with students. The rumored vault downstairs might be a possibility. Or you could set up your sort of like a loss of trail in here and give your pursuers the slip. What would you like to do? Well, after I'm done piling the, the books, I want to just like... Tell everyone, let's go to the other building now and just leave through another entrance or a window or whatever we can go through that is on the opposite side of the door. I think that is the best possible idea right now. We're still trying to give them the slip. 
Uh, I would love to work on a plan once we can settle down a little bit, but I don't think this is the place. No, time is of the essence here, and right now, in Call of Duty ODST fashion of the final mission, survive. Survive. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, Mecha has proven, like, capable in a way I didn't know that she was capable of. Um, Lilith has always been pretty powerful. Lulz will probably not accept my help right now. Uh, so I have decided that I want to try and death ward Aoi. What? If, if that power works right now. What do you mean by death yeah, ward? Yeah, excellent. Um, death, death ward is a ward spell. Is a... Yes. Go on. Y you're better at this. Oh, I was going to say, it is a fourth level cleric spell. Um, since cleric is actually my secondary class, uh, I figure that probably my skills don't go above fourth level. Um, so this is the most powerful spell in my book. You touch a creature and grant it a measure of protection from death. The first time they would, you know, die, hit zero HP. Um, instead, they are brought down to one HP um, as though they were stabilized. And the spell ends. Oh my god, it's second chance. It literally is. It's, it's such a good <laughs> spell. I didn't know that was an actual spell in D&D. &D. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, no, like, talk, a, talk about, like, people are always like, oh man, clerics are so underpowered. No, they bloody are not. So, it's uh, not concentration. It is touch. It lasts for eight hours. I probably don't have enough juice, given what we established at the start, for more than one. So I had to pick someone, and I pick Aoi to try and lay it on. That's probably... That certainly makes sense. It's honestly probably a great choice, because unfortunately you were right. I had to pick the Edgelord. <laughs> <laughs> Mecha, Mecha survived a 14-foot drop. Lilith is naturally a bad... Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what that word was. Uh, and... <laughs> you know, I'm going to give you an exclamation point good for that. <laughs> wow. Nice catch. Oh, uh, 10 out of 10. Very good. So. Miss Aoi, you yes. have experience with magic already. You've simply been near the professor enough that you've seen some of that happen before. You also have some of your own sort of innate magic, right? Yes. Okay. So you are not unfamiliar with the feeling of a helpful spell when it happens. Sister Ageha, you're sort of running low on juice like like we had established, this is going to be somewhat challenging for you. Let's make this an eight on your dis on your uh, difficulty. Wonderful. It is a six of uh, six of clubs. Now, ah. that is very funny. Uh, because this is a critical failure. Oh no. Sister Ageha, you of course die? were... <laughs> eh, no, no, no. Sister Ageha, you were, you were aligned to clubs. And since yeah. this is a club that was drawn but did not pass the check, it's a critical failure. Oh my god. Could I? Um, because our cards are for... The, the cards that we have, our edges and our secrets, are for saying uh, no thanks to those, right? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Could I, in theory, use one of my edges uh, not to pass the check, but instead to change the suit so it's not a critical failure? The way that the edges work in this system is if the card that is drawn matches the card of one of your edges. You don't have any clubs in your edges right now, so unfortunately, no. But what you could do is you could play a secret 
and add that number to your to the six that is there to make it so that it is not a critical failure and in fact is a success. Oh, it gets added? Mm-hmm. Correct. A secret adds, a, an edge replaces. Okay. Um, so so basically like place. the guidance spell from Shadowheart. Yeah, something like that. Um, I would like to do that then, because I don't want to know what happens if I critically fail this. <laughs> uh, Me neither. So I would like to play one of my secrets. All right, go ahead and drop it on the table there for us. It's the three of diamonds. And I will go ahead and take that. Thank you very much. Uh, so this makes it into a nine of clubs, which is a critical success. But first... Sister Ageha, you reach into yourself to find the energy for this spell. And in doing so, you find that it reveals something about you. That you weren't really looking to let the others know. Miss Lilith, what yes. secret about Sister Ageha is just revealed? Oh, um... Uh... Oh god, I don't know. <laughs> now remember, this is, this is not technically 100% canon, unless Sister Ageha makes it canon, so... Which I will. What's, what kind of secret would she reveal when she is casting this sort of necromantic spell? It's actually abjuration. It's abjuration in 5th edition. <laughs> Stares angrily at the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> Never um actually the professor. <laughs> It's only that way because the church doesn't like to be associated with necromancy. <laughs> the professor then goes on a 45-minute rant. <laughs> sure, that could be a secret in and of itself, if it's a necromancy spell. Uh, what do you um, think, Miss Lilith? Yeah, I'm fine with that, if that's good. <laughs> Excellent. So... The spell that is being cast is a necromantic spell masquerading as an abjuration <laughs> spell. Uh, and hey, lulls, give me an and or a but. Okay. Plus, this urge, wait, go. What was Lilith's, or what was the secret of Lilith revealed one more time? I was lost in the uh, laughter. The spell Ageha is cast. casting a necromancy spell. So basically, finish the sentiment. Ageha just cast a necromancy spell. And mm -hmm. or, or but but. but. but she has only ever cast this mm -hmm. a couple times before, and previously they had failed. Oh, interesting. This is the first time that my death ward has ever worked. Okay, I like that. <laughs> over over in the, the classroom right now, it's people like, Ageha knows all about necromancy because she bops people so hard with her hammer. No one can imagine anything bad about Sister Ageha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say this. That is still spicy, because imagine, I've used, or tried to use Death Ward in the past, but it hasn't worked. Indeed. That is pretty, that is pretty big, yeah. Alright, uh, so Ms. Aoi, you feel this kind of, like, warmth sort of wash over you from top of your head down to your, down to your feet, and you feel like there is a measure of protection there. Um... 
but when you look back to see how Sister Ageha has uh, has done it, you see like a very faint flicker of like a blackness disappear from her eyes as she is finished casting the spell. Very nice. So now, uh, Ms. Aoi, you have Death Ward on you. Uh, so if something extremely bad happens, maybe it will not happen. Maybe. Yay. <laughs> Yay, you will, we'll keep the penguin a little longer. <laughs> Only <laughs> once. <laughs> Only once. I said a little longer. Ew. I said a little longer. Look, we need to protect the Ruby. We cannot allow the troop, that one troop, <laughs> to happen. Amazing. No, I yeah, need to wonderful. die so that you're all sad and then you, you get the power inside of you to, to destroy everything, you know? Oh, we really are going Doom 2016 on this, aren't we? <laughs> I don't know. Well, remember, I'm, I'm a cyber demon that has an argent energy heart, so I'm probably the most walking, talking bomb in here. That's true. So yeah, far, for I've been, sure. So far, I've been playing trench coat laws closer to Duke than the Doom guy, which was unexpected, but we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, Duke Nukem is a great, stupid character. Uh, so, here yes. in the library now, the, the door barricaded with a thick, like, layer of books, and you now start hearing the, like, th thump, thump, c -c 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 from these shapes outside, beginning their, their work. There is a... Pretty clear shot through the like main entryway where you are from one side out the other side where there is another set of doors. I Let's highly go. suggest that we go and Let's we go. start uh, flipping shelves behind us. Yes. Go, go, go. Already figured ahead of you. I was planning for you guys to run so then I could do a Sand Devastant and basically just like topple everything beforehand while you guys are running. Flipping Shelves is my Ooh. middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Lawler Flipping Shelves Hicks? Yes. <laughs> Okay. It's only let's go. flipping shelves. It's only flipping shelves because we're in a family-friendly channel. It would be something otherwise. <laughs> Involving birds. Okay, let's go. I think we've got a plan of action. Yes. Uh, I really like. Uh, I like the idea of Mecha and Lols being the ones to lag behind and flip everything while the rest of us shoot forward. Okay, so Lilith. Ageha and Aoi, the three of you surge forward and like you head directly for this other set of doors. And you can see that there is like a large kind of barring mechanism on the inside that you will have to disengage before you can get through. But in the meantime, Mecha and Lulz. Mecha, you activate your wired reflexes and just begin moving at a pace that is disgusting to the people who can only see at normal speeds. And Lulz, do you have any sorts of, uh, like, teleports behind you, nothing personnel kid type style things to do here as well? Um, for all, for our purposes outside of a digital world, Lulz does not actually have the ability to do that, although they like to act as if they do. <laughs> Um, Amazing. Game one up by a side deep, cyber demon. Lovely. <laughs> pretty much. It's like one of them actually has skill and the other one is, for the most part, a LARPer. <laughs> Amazing. I'm all goth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. So the two of you, mostly Mecha, but Mecha and Lulz, uh, start to topple the shelves and, like, uh, make barriers and... and obstacles behind you as the other three reach this door the barring mechanism slides up very easily and as the door opens you hear no wait don't a voice coming from further in in the the, the library, off to the right side where there are some sort of book stacks that have been kind of pushed into what might almost be like a little nest, maybe? 
and there is like a wheelie cart with a stack of books that slides a little bit to the side and you see inside this like igloo of books there is a penguin penguin, penguin. <laughs> there's a penguin no there is a... <laughs> Oh boy. Um, there is a sort of younger student, maybe you would uh, wager that they're maybe fourteen or fifteen years old he's a or penguin. so. He's a penguin. Um, he's he's wearing a penguin hoodie. That's for sure. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I can't believe we found um, we found the mascot character. <laughs> <laughs> um they they're they're wearing a sort of penguin hoodie that looks like they bought it from like the online shop for the popular idol Miss Aoi. <laughs> um It's a fan. And they Yeah, like they they say, don't, don't open the door. Outside there is and then the kid sees Miss Aoi and stops immediately. The eyes go wide and then just goes, "Oh my god, it's you." <laughs> yeah. No, and he like shakes his head and like slaps his cheeks for a moment. He goes, "You can't open the door. Don't go outside. If you go out there, they're going to find you." All right. So, but what else are we supposed to do? I, I mean, you've seen what they do to you. If you get caught, there's there's not going to be much left of you to do anything with. Best to, need to stop just them. wait. Best best to best to just wait until somebody else comes and fixes it. Don't you think? No, we are we... the one protecting. We protect. We go. I protect all my fans. <laughs> <laughs> you see, say... like. You you see this kid like he kind of like absent-mindedly reaches down into the pocket of the hoodie and he pulls out one of the like little battery powered light sticks that they have at concerts. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> oh yeah, it's in Owie's colors. It's got like the the penguin icon on the front of it and he goes <laughs> Okay. If, if you're going then I, I'll protect you. And this he stands is... up and flicks the oh. little light on, and it makes it's like it's it's like the battery is like half dead, so it's like flashing at like half the normal speed, and it's not very bright. Oh. And he sort of like shakily steps forward, and he goes, "Let me go first. I can distract no. them." No. No. No, no, no! You don't go first. I protect. I'm, I'm, I protect all, 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 right. all the, all the all penguin right. fans. I protect. You can't go first. I will not allow it. <clears throat> there is a crash as the door finally opens far behind you, and the things begin starting to stream through the open door into the obstacle course of bookshelves and tables and things that has been left behind by your two colleagues. Mecca and Lulz, you arrive with the rest of the group, and now some little weeaboo-looking kid. Okay, no, we gotta do this. Who's this lost child? Who is this? Who's this small child? I'm gonna <laughs> scoop him up. I'm gonna scoop him up. What? Oh, okay. With okay. my big muscles, um, just scoop him up. Just yoink. <laughs> just yoink him. Amazing. All we right. gotta go, little man. Uh, you, you have gained a party member then. Um, for now, <laughs> we'll call him Fanboy. <laughs> Please don't call uh, him and... Fanboy. That makes me think of Fanboy and Chum Chum. What's... Would rather we call enough. him Dead Weight. No. <laughs> uh, and that's a reference to now... Someone May Cry. Yep. <laughs> I call now him. Six of you scramble through the door. You shut the door behind you, and you can hear the commotion from the inside of these things beginning to like surmount the obstacles on the inside. But in the meantime, you find yourselves now back just outside the library between 
or outside the library, between the library and the administration building. Let's run to the administration the... building. Oh yes, super yep. easy. You yeah. can see the admin awesome. building is one of the buildings on campus that has not been so affected by everything that has happened. You can see that there are like scorch marks where a spell has been cast, um, a, a, a line of like electricity on the ground, a large sort of circular scorch where someone must have cast fireball. And the front doors to the administration are closed. Uh, well, I have a door opener, and her name is Love Tap. <laughs> Don't break the door. We're gonna need them once we are inside. No, okay. Okay, then that leaves me. I psychic the door open. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I mean, that's entirely possible, but at the point that we are right now, you are pretty, like, hard-pressed to keep the kind of focus necessary to do any, like, small psychic work. We'll make this one, let's say, a difficulty six. Right. And on the student union, we've got a seven of hearts! Excellent work! <laughs> With a little bit of concentration, Mecca, you kind of just like focus for a moment, and when you open your eyes, there is a and the door swings open. On the inside, you see that there are various barricades now, like um, shelves and desks and things that have been set up in layers behind it. There is a like a gigantic sort of ballista crossbow that seems to have been transmuted from the books that is aimed directly at the door. There are five or six uh, sort of like animated statues that each are like in a kind of semicircle around the front of the door, each of them holding like a gigantic stone axe. And behind it, there is a figure in a long robe, a sort of uh, bathrobe looking setup. Um, it's oh, yellow of course, and- Oh, interrupt your bath, the bath time. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, 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 the robe itself is, is like kind of tattered down at the bottom, um, but it is like a yellow and gold sort of situation. Up on the top, there is a black wizard hat with a gold, uh, sort of band around it, and you find yourself standing face to face with a perhaps somewhat familiar face. This is Parian Knowledge Spreader Halath, the headmaster of the school. Oh. He stands stock still. Hi? He does not seem to he does not seem to respond when you open the door, but Sister Agiha, when you speak, there is the tiniest bit of just recognition. The head very slowly turns just a little bit, and you see that the eyes are missing. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And then there is a <laughs> and the body falls apart. The head tumbles off the shoulders and hits onto the ground and turns into much of the same shards as these creatures that you've been fighting. The arm falls down, the, the hand holding the cane drops down to the ground as well. And all that's left is like the left leg and boot. Everything else is the same shards. Uh... Okay, was that actually and then you a, hear... or was that an illusion? You hear deeper from inside. Clack, 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 And a wave begins to crash over all of the the obstacles and desks and barricades and things of these creatures. Small ones this time, the size maybe of a baseball, perhaps. But lots of them. 
Lols will... Okay, I shut the door immediately going, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to do that. <laughs> I was literally going to do exactly that. I was going to slow, well, I was going to quickly but firmly close the door and break character for a brief second. <laughs> Just door opens, door closes. Pretty much, Killed yeah. Dead, open inside. <laughs> Amazing. Don't dead. Um, yeah, yeah. The door closes and you hear the click of the latch and then instantly you hear of like hundreds of these little creatures flow throwing themselves up against the door. Lucky right, let's that you closed it when you this, did. Let's destroy this queen and go to the transmutation tower. <laughs> because I'm tired of this, okay? <laughs> I am tired of these god bleep uh living shard wax creature god things with these god blessed <laughs> these demon infested wax something something we, we don't know what we're going up against though we need more information we can't just it is with that statement however lulz that you realize no that's right the reason that we recognize what these things look like when they break up is because it looks like when you crush a wax candle and it turns into little waxy flat shards. These things must be made of wax. Oh. And that, like my friends, stuff. is where we will take our short little break. Let's go ahead and take a five minute break now. Now is a great time for everyone to <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, grab a snack, go to the bathroom, take medicine if that's something that you need to do. And we will be back in five short minutes. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Five yes. Yeah. All right then. Uh, here we go. And we're muted, and we'll be back in five. This entire session thus far. I am so proud of you, Mecca. <laughs> we are still alive, in spite, despite our best. I th I thought that we were going to be forced to use up or burn up our cards just to escape the building, and then it's like, oh, you just start literally. Slash hacking and slashing your way through them. I used the wrong screen. That was supposed to be the AFK screen, not the bye bye screen. People are going to be very confused now.
Pog. Are you doing okay? Can yeah. we keep Finian forever? Oh, that was perfect timing. <laughs> I needed to go to the bathroom so bad. Yeah, I was I was sort of feeling like the the group anxiety. That was just me needing to go to the bathroom. I'm good now. <laughs> but yeah, can you can you keep Finian for us forever in all the? Have the we decided that he's too? called Finian? I suppose yes. so. Yes. Finian the Penguin. The Penguin Boy. The pen the Penguin. <laughs> The penny 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 the, what, yeah. what the What's the idea between penny Gwyn? I don't understand. Uh, it's just a. It's bat. just saying it's penguin, just... but funny. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's cute. Yeah. So yeah, can we keep I it? Mean, can... Professor Cosmo, you don't have your tumbler on your card. That's because I have not uh, updated my card in a very long time. Don't worry, neither mm -hmm. have I. Or update my website, I should say. <laughs> well, we've got 40 seconds left. Um, I need to I need to go through and like re-update all of my social media stuff anyway because it, I have not logged into my Twitter for like a thousand years until Lulz tagged me in it recently. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm back. Welcome back to a stage of destiny. I do uh, well, we've hope got 15 I've seconds like, left. I do hope I've spiked curiosity about my spiritual weapon. Just Why is there an echo in the background? Oh, never mind. That's because of my headphones. Hog. Very good. Uh, here, four and three, two. Now then. now then, let's get back to it, shall we? And kaboom. Here we are back. Everyone also is back as well, I hope. Welcome you bet. to the classroom, Mistress of the Fae. Yeah, uh, I hope that everyone had the chance to go to the bathroom, get snacks, do all the stuff that they needed to do. Uh, we are back now with phase two of the exam. How is everyone doing so far? Are we having a good time? I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm having the time of my it's life. It's currently playing Highway to Hell on my Spotify playlist, which is kind of fitting right now. <laughs> I don't know why they keep Amazing. me trapped in the Amiibos longer than most. Something, something completely mentally and emotionally unstable, even compared to the other losses. Something. <laughs> I'm living my best... Something, something's been complete. <laughs> I'm living my best life. <laughs> The others do not oh, understand God. what it's like to have hands and feet and guns and what targets to use them on. <laughs> oh, amazing. I love it. Uh, I'm going to resize this real quick so that we get a little bit more of it. There we go. Excellent. So then, <clears throat> back where we were. Just so recently... Uh, the group had managed to get into the front door of the administration building, where they found that the headmaster had apparently been turned into wax, and that there were a lot of those little things inside the building. Mm. So, uh, what's the plan now, friends? What would you like to do? Uh, so, all these things are the door, them now. Now. <laughs> uh, I'm... They're all, like, in front of us, right? Uh, yeah. The huge, like, wave of the the small creatures is currently behind the door to the administration building, trying their darndest to get out and at you. Okay, can I try something oh. weird? Go for <laughs> it. Okay, can I try to sing a hot song and try to warm the door so that... If they are really made of wax, then they will melt while touching the door. Wow. Interesting. You know what? I like it. Um, this is part of the innate magic that you've got going on that you can use your your sort of bardic materials for. Why not? Um, let's say that this will be a... I'll call it a six for difficulty. It's a little bit more difficult than sim than simple, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. We'll put it down on the student union. It is a two of clubs. 
Okay, Ms. Can, Ollie, can... would you like to use any of your things? Yes, please. Can I use a... Wait. If I use the seven of... Uh, of uh... Wait, what's the word in English again? Uh, diamonds. Then is it a critical hit? No. So, the way that your face-up cards work, your edges, is you yeah. can only replace a card uh, if so... it's the same suit. So if I'd okay. drawn the two of diamonds, you could replace it. Your secrets right. that are in your hand, you can use with any card, and it will add to it. And I need a seven. So if you have... if you... Uh, you six. need a six or higher. Okay. And so if I, I I just need to add a four to that two then. Correct. I'm sorry, math are not my thing. <laughs> All right, yes. so I want to I want to play a secret card. <gasps> well, well, show us the secret. The five of clubs. Well done. I'll go ahead and take that. So Ms. Aoi takes a breath and begins singing a song that would heat up the door and theoretically melt the creatures on the other side. Hey, Mecca, what secret about Miss Aoi does she reveal in doing so? Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. You put me on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's how playing I a tabletop role playing game. <laughs> I know. It's type that kind of game. Like... <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. But like, um, um. Now I'm trying to think of something. Oh, I like my gardenias. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna copy my gardenias homework because I'm not looking, obviously. <laughs> Again, Secret I'm death to... metal voice. Amazing. <laughs> it turns out that O is actually a Gretzko. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> I don't even. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> uh, it's a show. Uh, secret. Uh, she has a secret family head heritage of famous virtuosos that have been passed along the years, along the centuries. Ooh, so there we go. That's interesting. And uh, Ms. Lilith, give me an and or a but. Now who's been put on the spot? Uh, but they have all. <laughs> but they have all uh, died horrible deaths. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Oh, Bruh! Oh my god! Oh, 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 <laughs> spirits of her virtuoso ancestors. This explains so much! That's, that's big rough, but okay, that's, that's certainly a secret there. Okay, can you uh, say Ms. that again oh. for me? Ms. Aoi, you choose the song that makes the most sense here, and it is a song that you remember one of your great-grandparents, perhaps, singing. You come from a long line of very intense virtuosos who are very skilled at their musical craft. But it seems that all of them that were so skilled met a grisly and horrible end. And you sing the song that belongs to one of them. <laughs> That's wild. That... Um, yeah, excellent. You begin the the song and it... Like, after a moment or so, like, everyone else listening, you hear... Like, it feels almost like you are also sort of warming. And when you look back at the door, you see the metal fixtures on it begin to start to shimmer and then glow and then become red hot. And the door itself begins to almost warp with the heat. And then you, you see, after a moment, a sort of 
multicolored pool begin to seep out from underneath it. Oh, shit. You think that <laughs> you may have definitely melted quite a lot of them. I never want to swear! Majority! Of all people! Of all the people here! The, the PG-13s! I would not Wait, have you... expected it. The, can we, the, can we the, get a bad in chat? The floodgates now <laughs> must be opened. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that was our one curse for the whole stream. Everyone expected me to swear at first within the first five seconds, and I didn't. Uh, this TV uh, show yeah. just got bumped up to TV 14 for that. <laughs> Night oh, Gardenia, what just happened? Owie said a bad word. <laughs> I mean, it Wait, wasn't that a... bad, let's be what? fair. What it did wasn't. I say? You said you you exclaimed the S word. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i sorry. It's I, so isn't funny. Funny. No, it's really funny. So, you know, English is not my, my, my native language, so I don't know. Sometimes it's uh, fine. It's totally that good. makes it even funnier. Children in this country it's learn so worse funny. things by the time they're ten. Don't worry, Aoi, it was Gap Moe. No, we're just Amazing. it's it's a joke it's a joke. You're fine, Aoi. We're we're not Boy, actually making fun of you or anything. Yeah, we don't care, that was hilarious. We you can almost anyway, say that we uh, don't give up bleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, listen here, you. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So, um yeah, with this you now gather that fire and heat seems to be effective against these creatures. And that puddle that's coming out from under the door when it is finished being liquid and sort of solidifies back into wax, it seems to not move any further. Question. Hot Answer. the song get? That, uh, in, you tell us, Aoi, how hot can you make your song? Uh, I'd say, I, I mean, since now you all know my secret, I would say that, and I count on you, Professor, to translate into American things, but, <laughs> uh, I would say that over... 45 degrees becomes dangerous, and over 55, I I'm dead, so please avoid. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, so the answer is pretty hot, but the hotter she makes it, the more dangerous it is for her. Oh, wow. Okay. Only mm. reason why it's kind of cybernetic arm, Kelvins, that can possibly melt. Could we... Here's an idea. Could we borrow the song to use it on the mother? Keep Ooh. Ali safely out of range of it so it doesn't melt her, but melts the mother. Oh, to record it. Oh, <gasps> we it... could record Ali singing and play it <laughs> over the loudspeakers. I like the way you think. I'm a fucking. I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> um, the floodgates have. <laughs> Not just open, they have no, flooded. The floodgates have not opened. We are not going to curse again. Behave. <laughs> <laughs> <Amazing. laughs> we did it first. I did it second. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, so now that you've got this idea and this piece of information, the five of you begin your trek up toward the transmutation tower. Uh, there we ask... is. Go on. Okay. Can we ask Finian if maybe he has something to record? Hmm. Finian uh, takes a moment. His name is Finian now. We've it, That's just how it is. Um, <laughs> Finian the Pinnequin. He takes a moment and then kind of like holds his head and then he goes, I mean, maybe I, I have... And he pulls out an old Walkman, like a cassette tape Walkman. Amazing. Okay, Star Lord. Oh, look, it's and a he running pulls... woman. <laughs> he... 
<laughs> he uh, pops the thing open and pulls out the cassette tape, and it is a, it is the the cassette version of Miss Aoi's last live concert that he bought as merch at the concert. A person of culture, Lal says, <laughs> nodding approvingly. He says, no. I mean, I've got this. You'd have to record over the concert, though. Yeah, but wouldn't you love to have a personalized Aoi recording just for yourself? <laughs> Which you can he use takes a moment and then looks back at the door, which is still red hot, and then takes a breath and says, "You know, I I think I'd like that." Uh, I I take his uh. I take his hand. I take his hand. I look at him in in his eyes, and I'm like, "You are the most amazing fan I have." Let's do this together. <gasps> oh! That just um, fell in my heart! Lulz breaks His character and actually starts sniffling. <laughs> <laughs> His whole face turns the brightest red that a human can turn. Uh, and he just kind of like... Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, like, he, he tries to look strong about it for a second, but you can tell that, like, if there ever was someone who was squeeing himself to death, it was this guy. Amazing. All right. Uh, so the, the six of you head up toward the transmutation tower, and you find yourselves standing now at the edge of a gigantic sinkhole. <laughs> Dang. That's a My large hole. Is, it is humongous. There My is a... Yeah, it's not good right now. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> do we need to... Do I need to change no, no. The, the picture? No, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Come on, sir. Tight over this. Okay. Um, between the dormitory and the tower, a humongous portion of the ground has simply collapsed and you can tell that like the the opening leads down under the dormitory more than it does under the tower and you see down deep inside little flashes of color movement the sound of these creatures as they move back and forth. It feels like there are lots of them down there. Mm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This must be where the boss uh, level is. Uh, how deep is the hole? You would wager that this is about uh, 25 yards or so deep. Yards and meters are almost the same. Okay, so... Before it starts to kind of, like, curve to one side. So, over 200. Um... Uh, 25 yards is... Oh, like, no, wait. Yeah, like 75-ish feet, yeah. I don't know why it's... Oh, you said... Oh, you said <laughs> over 9,000! <laughs> no, I, like... Because I... Where she said it's, like... 75 in my head, and I it switches 75 yards, which in Ah, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, excellent. You guys are there. Um, as you are standing here, um, there is a sound of more of these creatures, and as you look up on the other end of the the sinkhole, which is itself about 40 feet in diameter or so, you see. A group of these creatures uh, sort of shamble, bumble, bounce up to the edge of it, and they've got what appears to be two-thirds of the corpse of some big animal. Um, and they, like, just kind of, like, amble up to the edge, and then all of them, like lemmings, fall into the, the, the hole, corpse and all. It uh, seems they didn't take notice of you. They had a quarry already. So, are we going down there? I 
think the plan was to broadcast down there if we can. Broadcast. Our oh. song. Um. Um. No, to to keep in mind, um, of course, this is the wizardry campus. Um, it stands to reason that there would be something like a, a a communications system, but it is one of like arcane and artificy in nature, not one that is uh, as simple as the Walkman. Nevertheless, you probably could do something if you could find that mechanism and find a way to move it. Um, However, also... what you see down there is quite a few of these creatures that, like, move in clusters. Like, a, a cluster will move past, and then there will be nothing for a bit, and then another cluster will move the opposite direction, and then there will be nothing for a bit. As you look down and you see that group that has fallen down into it, many of them have kind of splatted into wax, but those who have not gather up the now splattered two-thirds of that corpse, and drag it off under the dormitory. Absolutely uh. disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> um. I don't know if the spell would reach down there. <laughs> I think we will need uh. to enter the heart of darkness. Can we get down there? Is there a Can rope or ladder of some there? kind? Hold on. I think... Um... Ali, you're a yes. bard, right? That is correct. Could you... cast Featherfall on us? I... Uh, if you tell me what it is, because I am not very familiar with spells. <laughs> uh, it is a first level spell that can be used by bards, sorcerers, and wizards. You can select up to five falling creatures uh, within 60 feet of you, um, and the rate of descent uh, slows down, basically, so we don't take fall damage, so we don't go splat. Uh, Splot. Yes, yes, I, I can definitely try. All right, if that's the plan. The spell needs to be cast when you are already falling. So everything is timing. Good, I'm good at timing. <laughs> good, good. Yes, that would be... Let's, yeah, we'll be let's, get, let's get the music started. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and when you say that, fin Finian? Filian? What's his name? Finian. Yes, Finian. Finian. Finian, Finian. Finian, Finian uh, like, gets a little flash in his eyes, and he pushes the play button on his on his Walkman. And, Owie, the background tracking to one of your, your uh, tracks from your concert begins. <laughs> All right. Are we are we all jumping? Yeah. 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 Okay. Can all we hold hands jump? while we jump? <laughs> In like a little circle, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Ms. Aoi, this is a spell that you need to cast under pressure. We will say that this is a difficulty five for you. Okay, I, I'm not is... looking at this at the screen because it's really making me uncomfortable. <laughs> That's fair. What, um, what it is? It is three of spades, uh, which is not a success. Uh, Do you want uh... to? You only need a five. Um, here I'll put the the cards back. Uh, I think I might have a card in my secret. Let me just uh, grab those really quick and then put them over there. Uh, kaboop. Uh, then... Crossplaner Cleric. This is a system called We That Remain, a survival horror RPG by Grant H. Grant Howitt, it turns out. Grant Howitt. 
Uh, I think I have I have uh, one in in my. Can you see my hand or not? Uh, no. cannot see your hand. No. Uh, no, you would have to drag uh, the then, card out of your hand. I'm gonna put my hand in front of my screen and then and, and put the card. I know which one I want. Yeah, I need a five, right? Correct. All right. So I'm putting uh, this card. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, wonderful. Hey, excellent. Uh, we're just going to put you back on the campus map for now so that we don't have to worry about the, the image. Perfect. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no worries. Excellent. Um, with those two cards put together, which I'm going to go ahead and take care of both of those right now. We remove this one and we remove this one. Very good. Uh, with those two cards put together, you start falling and there's just a brief moment where you think, oh no. But then the words come to you and you manage to breathe in and begin the lyrics and your company is falling and falling and suddenly whoosh like a feather you begin to drift slowly down to the bottom you luckily land in between the sort of period where the the creatures are moving back and forth you can see to the left there's a kind of large tunnel that leads downwards, and you can hear water. And then off to the right, there's another tunnel that leads, like, into the space under the transmutation tower. But most of the sound of these creatures is coming from the left, under the student dorms. Where and... we heard the water? Or... And I and? revealed a secret. That's true. We forgot about that, didn't we? Um, Ms. <laughs> Aoi yes. has revealed a secret. Uh, we would have Mecca and Lilith do it again, but this time around, let's have Lulz give the secret and, uh, and Ageha give the and or but. Oh my goodness, I so, need to think of something that's lulls. not mean, because having two <laughs> depressing secrets one after another... I'll inf that I, is I bad inflict enough? I inflict that sort of stuff on myself, but inflicting on another person is just cruel and unusual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Well, this one's kind of negative but is not as mean as the previous one that involves their parents dying so uh <laughs> i'm in fact i'm going to try i'm going to even actually i'm going to make this a wholesome one so prior to what we just did unbeknownst to ave one you actually have a deathly fear of caves and really dark spaces like the one we just entered mm. ah so oh he has Hi. claustrophobia Something but. like that, yeah. But, uh, as long as someone is holding her hand, she's brave enough to push through it. Yeah! Ah, oh, that's adorable. That's adorable. Wonderful. Yeah, so that, that works out. holding my hand now? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm squeezing your I'm sure. hand real tight. I'm sure Finian would do it. <laughs> I, I don't think Finian has the has the guts to to his <laughs> hands. Yeah, I don't think so either. Imagine hand holding. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> I would not Maybe. know about hand holding. Sad face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, you guys made a circle before you jumped in, which means that at least two people are currently holding your hand, Aoi. Which gives you the bravery necessary. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> There's the path down, and the path up. Which direction would you like to go? I suppose we have to go down, down to see the mother. Is that unless a group it's... consensus? Yeah, unless anyone else has a better idea. No. Oh, I'm gonna no. see the mother, all right. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? 
Oh boy. Uh, all right. There's a particular song I thought of in my head when you said that. <laughs> it was a good song. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. That. Um the six of you together begin your trek down the path. Now Ms. Ali, I'm switching the the set up here so if this image also gives you anxiety we can totally switch it no this one's okay uh it's too Excellent. blurry anyway <laughs> wonderful yeah. all right you find yourselves walking down and like the the creatures like you're in between two of two groups of them and as they are moving you are able to move in between them which seems to be working out and you find it opens up into a large underground cavern with like a a, a lake perhaps under it this sort of crystally blue kind of water and there is a small opening somewhere high up above where light is coming in and you see down at the edge of the water the creatures that were carrying that corpse of the, the animal dump the animal into the water and then a shudder and a huge hand maybe five feet in the, the width of the palm reaches forward from the darkness picks up the corpse and brings it back and now that you're looking you can see in the darkness, they, there is what appears to be a humanoid figure, maybe 50 feet tall. And it holds the corpse up, opens up a humongous mouth, drops the corpse inside. And a moment later, in the center of its stomach, a sort of rumble and roil and then an opening and out of the stomach pour 25 30 maybe more of those creatures that fall into the water float out to the edge get to the 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 space where there is like ground and begin to hop down up towards the exit This large creature I've hasn't seemed to have noticed you yet. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? The, the I've seen bigger. I've seen bigger. The large creature doesn't seem to have noticed you yet, and you are able to sort of stay to one side of the long passageway, uh, such that the creatures that are coming up and down managed to get past you without noticing. But... This is as far as you can go before you get to the water or the 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 bright light. So, friends, with this humongous, vaguely humanoid shape up ahead of you, partially submerged in the water, and what must be hundreds of these creatures coming back and forth, delivering pieces of things that this this large creature scoops up stuffs into its grotesque mouth and then outputs more of these shapes what would you like to do um how far away is this you would wager it's maybe f 50 feet or so away from you across the surface of the water. Okay. Uh, I haven't... <laughs> so we need to kill that thing, right? As far as we know. I'm going to do a science and point out that as long as it's in that water, I'm not sure if it's going to melt like we hope it will. Uh, that, that is how science works, right? 
I'm not. That's but, not my. No, it's not because I don't. I don't well, make that, fire. That, big, that, that yeah, thing that's... isn't. That thing isn't yeah, made of glass, right? Uh, you're yeah, not close enough question. to be able to tell. Oh. Yeah, because um, I'm actually doing some research right now because water's melted boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. That is always a confirmed fact. Yes. Whereas yep. wax, there is three types of wax. Soy wax is 49 to 82 degrees Celsius. I'm using Celsius, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, paraffin wax the is 46 to 68. And beeswax is 62 to 65. And gel wax, the higher melting point is 82 degrees Celsius. Meaning, depending on what wax that thing is made of, it has to be the lower of the two, it has to be either soy or paraffin wax for Aoi's song to pull off. If it's beeswax or gel wax, we may have a problem. Well, you know uh... that Aoi's song was able to get it hot enough to melt the other things. True. And those um, things seem to be coming out of this this creature. Yeah, but so I don't think like they were probably made of power from wax. Uh, I mean, I could use fire as well. If Howie would stay wants to stay back. <laughs> I have my fire right here, and they sheath the enormous Dai Katana and pull out the obnoxiously large shotgun that has <laughs> been totally not copied from Doom. No, totally not. No, certainly not. Totally not. It's a yeah. totally not copyright infringement. Yeah, yeah. Don't let uh, Monty Shatton know. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> as long as you haven't done anything yet there's no chance of you being caught but yeah, you are um... pretty sure that the second you start something there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get noticed but I we, guess, like, a watched already... you know, attack, would it reach across this lake? Wait, because we already know they can't hear. So maybe we should do something with sound, and then they will just get surprised. That means I could literally shoot or empty all of my shotgun shells into them, and they would not be able to hear it, but probably feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think stealth our... is probably the best option here. Huh? I think our, I think our original Stealth is probably our best option. Wait, what is Agaha trying to Wait. say? Sorry. If what Aoi is saying is right, which, I mean, yeah, we know that these things can't hear. If the mother can't hear, if, assuming this is the mother, can't hear either, then we can just project Aoi's song and stay still, and it won't hear, and it won't notice until it's already, you know... Hot to melt over. Yeah. So will Aoi's song reach over? We need something to amplify the song. Finian just kind of holds up the Walkman, and it's got a little speaker built into it, but you're not sure if that's going to be big enough. What if we throw it to them <laughs> while it's playing? It will I'm break. Not sure that's going to be enough. What if? It will probably fall in the water and get my foot by the water. What if... What if... We use the water as the amplification? What if Aoi sings and heats up the water? Boiled wax. I Is edible? I actually have a better idea. Oh? Remember, I am powered by Argent Energy. Yes. Which is very, very unstable. I can possibly override the functionalities of the Walkman to overcharge it, 
therefore actually hectupling the power output of the heat of the song if I have one clear shot. <laughs> we just need Basically, to make sure we can keep Aoi safe from the heat too. Yes. What I'm planning to do is, once it eats another per another being, I shoot the Walkman, the overcharged Walkman, into its mouth. And once it hits contact, boom, a napalm. A <laughs> what about when it opens its stomach? That might get bigger. The, the, the heat will follow through and will literally turn it to ashes. An excellent plan, Sight! perhaps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll have to see how it turns out. <clears throat> so, as you are speaking, another group uh, drags down what appears to be pieces this time. Um, is, is something that you might have seen, like, at a butcher shop. A bone with meat attached to it. Um, like, maybe a, a, a pile of, uh, like, solidified fats, that kind of business. Um, and then, rather disconcertingly, the top three quarters of what appears to be a human head. And they dump it into the water. Bruh. The big creature reaches its hand forward and scoops up the viscera, brings it back towards its open mouth, and holds it up like it's going to drop it inside like pieces of candy. What's the plan? <clears throat> I think we do the overcharge thing. We have Aoi sing a fresh, hot song uh, recorded on the Walkman. I think we have Mecha overcharge it, and we fire it into the thing's open mouth. I think that's the best plan that we've got. Well, uh, your window to do this plan this time around is slowly shrinking as it begins to drop little bits of this viscera into its mouth. We need to do it now. Let's yeah, do it. Uh -huh. All right. Ali sings Ms. Mega Owl. Charge, and I think I can shoot it. Ms. Aoi, then. You've sung this song before, but... This is a much sort of bigger target. You know that you're going to need to put a little bit more of yourself into this song. This is going to be slightly more difficult for you. All right. Let's uh, call this one a difficulty eight. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. And our draw is the nine of spades. Excellent work. <laughs> you take a breath. And you know the risks of singing this song bigger. But you dip your foot just in the very edge of the water and the coolness calms you down. And you take your breath and you begin to sing instantly. As soon as the notes begin to leave your mouth, the head snaps over. And looks directly at your group. I was afraid it. The mouth is still snap. open. Uh oh. Oh god, it hears. We gotta do this now. Quick! We have to do this now. Mecca. Overcharging. Keep. Do it. Work. Keep singing, little creature. And then Lowell's just kind of sticks in front with their shotgun ready. Yeah. Mecca, well on the, you on have. The fence. Excellent. Uh, Mecca, you have to do some sort of destabilization in order to use this ability to, to overpower this object, right? Yes. Um, That's dangerous, currently... isn't it? Yes, considering now I am now surrounded in a red lightning aura. Oh god. Wow, wow. They're like a firework. Um, 
Mecca begins to just kind of pulsate with this this red argent energy and reaches down and grabs the the walkman it's still recording and you can see on the inside like the the components begin to sort of glow and shimmer as well mecha this is very possibly going to damage you as well as anything very close to you am i correct in that it's going to more likely do more damage to me since obviously the argent core is my second heart that tracks um let's make this a difficulty 10 then shall we in oh, order man. to keep yourself together the draw is a seven the seven of clubs you got anything for us mecca there we go dropping down an extra three this is one of your secrets then yes yes Mecca, you clench your fingers around this little device and you feel that energy pouring down your arm into its circuitry and you feel it begin to just shudder in your hand and the volume gets louder and louder and louder and somehow you are able to use your Argent energy to hold the diodes together that make up the speaker and it does not instantly explode and it is loud and it is hot hey uh hey lulz what secret did mecca just reveal all right i have a good one but i'm not hmm (laughs) do it do it do it do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Mecca do was it, not it. always okay, a, Mecca was not always a demon. Ooh. She she was a human at one point, but used the but appealed oh, no. to demonic forces. Well, she was to... a human at one point. Yeah. Full stop. But or and Ms. Aoi. Please oh, add if you say anything about quite secret. about penguins, I swear. To God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I'm sorry in advance, but you're not. She <laughs> made a pact with uh, the, the 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 penguin overlord that transformed her into. <laughs> okay, so I made a pact with Paimon then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. There we go. Okay. Amazing. Excellent. um, There there is in the Lesser Key of Solomon, one of the great demons described inside, a sort of squat bird-like demon, the penguin overlord, if you will. Paimon, in fact. (laughs) And that is... In fact, actually true. Uh, And Mecha, you, as you are overcharging this, uh, just the kind of briefest, like, image of this squat bird demon lord kind of, in like, encases your body and that, that energy forms that shape for just the briefest second. The Walkman is charged. The music is going and it's getting hot. I will do something very risky. I hope you have your bow! (laughs) I have something better. I have someone to shoot the bow. I will summon, with what I'm guessing is my last spell slot, a guardian of faith. Ooh. Ooh. And... Guardian of faith is pretty big. We'll see uh, how the cards go to see how it works. I have ideas if it goes bad, and I have ideas if it goes good. All right. Guardian of Faith is a pretty darn big spell, and you are still pretty tapped out. Let's see if the mana you've got is enough for it. This is going to be a difficulty 10. Okay. It's a nine. Nine of clubs. And that's, that's my suit. 
So it is. You you got any secrets left, Ms. Ageha? I do. I have the Queen of Hearts. Woo! Yeah, that brings us up to a 20. 21 brings us up to a 21. Blackjack. And Plenty the enough of, for that. The Queen of Hearts comes in the form of my Guardian of Faith that takes shape as I grab the very hot uh, Walkman from Mecca. And he is very large, you know, as a guardian of faith, is what looks to be a projection in glimmering gold uh, of a man with long flowing hair, a smarmy grin, and a bow woven with forget-me-nots. Oh, oh hi, historian. <laughs> no, long flowing hair. Think of it. Yeah. it looks exactly like a starian. Long haired Astarian. Starian, but but with long hair. Very good. The, yeah, no, um The only the, color the, this... to him is his eyes which glitter emerald green. That's fine. Ooh. I'm still calling him a starian. <laughs> this apparition <laughs> sort of grows out of the nothing from behind you and reaches down with the right hand and plucks the the Walkman from your hand and pulls it back on the string, aiming at the queen. And it fires. Instantly, this white-hot, loud object buries itself into the open mouth of this creature and you can see the red glowing energy just like travel down its throat and into the center of its mass and it begins to roil and thrash and roar and it slams both of its hands down in the water and a spray of water just kind of overtakes the land where you are and it reaches down and tears its own stomach open and out of it pour just dozens of these creatures all different sizes all different shapes but all of them are red orange and yellow and they begin to scramble across the the surface of the water towards you as this is happening that light from inside of it seems to have attracted the attention of the rest of the horde as well. And they all begin sort of scrambling down the opposite side. Your party is being pincered, attacked from both sides. The first of them, maybe seven feet tall, a kind of square on one end that twists down and is like a, a like a weirdly twisted prism with two big bulbous eyes, gets to the edge of the water and is right face to face with you, Lulz. And it reaches down, sort of like curving its body as though it was going to slam its mouth directly over you. What do you do? At last, our battle will be glorious! Chuck Chuck. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot this thing straight in the face. Oh yes. Oh yes. As it's coming down, its mouth open, you just point the quad barrel shotgun up and pull the trigger. The muzzle flash is bright and the, the, the bang is deafening as it just blows an entire hole right through the back of this thing's head and the wax begins to disintegrate around it. But the body keeps coming down and the teeth are still sharp and it tries to grab over both of your arms and try to wrench you around it's coming in because you've blown a hole in most of its head the difficulty for this thing is going to be 10 to try to hit you and it is a joker the teeth latch around both of your forearms and begin to lift you up off the ground but because it does not have a place to store you in its body anymore you are simply there uh, i need you to discard one of your uh, edges. Oh. 
There goes my Dai Katana. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of the king. As you are lifted up, the katana slips out of the the sheath on your back, tumbles into the water, and sinks down into the darkness. This Excellent. Like, this feels like a metaphor for something. <laughs> uh, more of them are coming in from the other side. Mecca, you are sort of like trying your best to recover and regain the, the control of your energy. So you are focusing on that for just a moment. But Lilith, you look back and you see a wave of these creatures coming down the path that you just took. There are... 60, maybe 70 of these things, all in different sizes and shapes. But one of them, maybe the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, begins rolling down towards you, its mouth open and the teeth turning out like spikes. What do you do? Um... I want to cast a spell. What um, kind of magic do you want to do? It's... Uh... Release the hounds. <laughs> um, it's fire base, uh, and I pretty much just want to wipe all these guys off the face of <laughs> out of this cave of existence. <laughs> you want to make a really big spell out of this one, like a, a sort of hellfire type spell? Yes. All right, you tell me what difficulty you want it to be, and I'll give you the effect of how big it is. Uh, doing, doing 10. All right. With a difficulty 10, this will definitely, if, if your spell works, it will definitely decimate most of this first wave coming down. Let's see how it turns out. It is a four of clubs. Are you? Okay. Have you got something for us, Lilith? There we go. Lilith just kind of reaches into herself and then blazes yeah. begin. Lilith, you yes. just, uh, you begin to reveal things about yourself. Miss Aoi, what does Lilith reveal in casting this gigantic fire spell? Aoi? Uh, she's muted. Uh oh, Ms. Uh -oh. you were muted if you were yes, trying to talk. Yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, because yeah, okay. I so let me uh get something from my brain. Uh, Excellent. I'm very sorry. There's only penguins in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that Lilith, Lilith used to uh hang out in Antarctica. Like in a place like Antarctica, in a like for years, she used to live with a a group of penguins there that considered her her uh, family. Interesting. And, the and or but Miss Ageha. Uh, this is Lilith, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Used to live in Antarctica with a bunch of penguins, <laughs> and rode around on a sled pulled by two of her dogs. Aww. Aha. This may explain why she is so inundated, or not inundated, but whether why she is so skillful with fire is because aside from her having the kind of infernal pact that she does, she also lived in such a cold place for so long that fire was her, like, main source of of uh, energy and usefulness to those there. Which makes sense. Ms. Lilith, you reach into yourself, and as you look up, the fire in your eyes just is reflected in this humongous wave of flame that just completely boils the first two-thirds of that, that entire wave that is coming through. Uh, as that is happening, though, a few keep coming forward, and there are three of them. One of them is like a long kind of triangle shape, and it sort of launches off the back of another one, trying to pierce directly into your chest. Because Bruh. it is 
working with so little of its companions now and has less uh, support on it, it's going to be difficulty 9 to hit you. And it's a 10! Bruh. Wait, me? Excellent. Uh, yeah, it's the, the significantly smaller one uh, manages to slip through and pierces just below your left shoulder. You can feel the, the like, edge of it, like, skluck, and then push inside. And I need you to discard one of your edges. Uh, doggos. Ooh, the dogs go. Ooh, I was not no. Me. <laughs> As this wound happens, your mind flashes for a moment, and you think, "I can't bring the dogs here. It's too dangerous." And you lock them out. Oh. Oh. Excellent. Um. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Sister Ageha. The the figure behind you has like the, the, the fingers are released on the bow and it looks back and it sees the like waves coming down that path, looks down at you and then turns to impose itself between those waves and you. But just as that is happening, one of the gigantic hands starts to reach across the water towards you. What do you do? Uh, one of the giant hands of the of the mother. Correct. Because the mother's still alive. Um, it's hey, listen. Some stuff is about to happen with this thing. You think? Mm. <laughs> I am going to um. Okay. Okay, I have a plan of action. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm very nervous about this. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look up at the Guardian of Faith, the figure, um, and a very sad smile crosses my face. And I say, thank you, Cinnamon. And I fall back and let the hand take me with my, my oh. grip curled around love tap. Oh. Which, the by hand the way, starts to uh, just to be fully transparent, you didn't ask anyone to uh, for the secret when I unleashed it. That's true. We forgot about that, didn't we? All right. Uh, then it's secret time. <laughs> Uh, when the big, when the big sort of figure began to materialize behind Sister Ageha, there, some something something was let through on that one. Lilith, what did what secrets did Ageha reveal? Uh... Um, uh, I don't know. Lore, 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 And obviously, like, uh, you can make this as, as intense or as benign as you like, obviously. Make it intense. Yeah. Make it intense. We need the drama. I... I... don't have anything. Uh... Do you want to pass it to someone else? Can I pass it to someone else? If you pass it, it's to me. me. Oh. Uh... I'm gonna have to pass it. Oh, the figure that materialized, yeah, the figure that materialized behind Sister Ageha, the Guardian of Faith, is the first person she failed to save. Oh my goodness! 
lulls an and or a but, please. And on top of that, it was the person who taught her how to use that spell in the first place. Oh, oh Christ. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's... Yikes. That's movie yeah. style. That's, All right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's cayenne pepper in the wound. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sister Ageha, as that hand closes around you, it constricts, and you can feel it start to crush you. You surrendered into this attack, so the 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 difficulty for it is going to be pretty low. It's going to be a five. Mm -hmm. And that nine definitely goes through. You feel the just strength behind this gigantic hand begin to constrict on you so much that one of your ribs dislocates, and I need you to get rid of an edge, please. Uh, I will be getting rid of the five of diamonds as my cleric powers simply because I'm out of spell slots. That tracks. I'll take that. <laughs> nice. Wonderful. Uh, Miss Aoi, your voice is hot in your throat from singing that song, and it still feels like you're just at the very edge, maybe, of starting to burn up yourself, but you know that you are safe here. When you look over, coming out of the water, there is one that looks like a, a two sort of long rectangles joined at the back, and it snaps together like a big alligator mouth sort of thing, with teeth lining the inside, and it tries to snap around your legs. What do you do? I mean, since everyone just left to go fight, I am currently just on the floor holding my knees and be like why am i here why am i here why am i here because no one's holding my hand <laughs> oh 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 <laughs> oh so no i'm just like on the floor and in like a total panic crisis so i don't know what's going on i am not doing oh, anything boy. but crying yeah I'm not doing anything man my arm is currently disabled because of the rg energy overdrive i just did so i'm pretty much nearly useless <laughs> well, we'll get to you in just a moment, Mecca, but uh, with the lack of a defense on it then, this thing's going to try to bite into you, and with the the difficulty that low, we'll say it's a five. That six comes in. You feel the teeth sink into your legs. And uh, I need you to discard one of your edges, please. Well, I'm... Um... Well, well it, 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 it bites me, so I just, like, anything I was holding is now gone, so I don't have my knife anymore. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> what is it? Low counter spell the pangy bite. Oh. <laughs> I can't... Of course... Uh... All right. Well, I mean, okay. So here's how I bet this went down, right? Because I'm not, I'm not looking at the chat super great. Um, Night Gardenia probably went, "Oh my God, somebody please counterspell this," and Lull said, "I'm on it." <laughs> uh, Night Gardenia actually didn't say anything. Hmm. Well, she's not allowed to use the counterspell anyway for this exact <laughs> purpose. <laughs> Lulz is going to get banned from using counterspells. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a list. It's just gonna be like the exclamation point, the list. It's gonna give a list of people who are banned from using counterspell. But as the legs begin to snap, or the, the, the things begin to snap towards your legs, you hear a ka-chunk. And as you open one eye, you see Finian there, and he's jammed his concert light in between the two things with the teeth on them to stop them from hitting you. And he looks over and he says, G -g -g -go, go run! I oh my gosh. <laughs> but now, 
since that's how we're doing it, now we have to do, let's say, a difficulty eight to overcome the concert light. <laughs> Oh, and gosh. it's an ace. Oh. It stays. The 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 two like mouth bits try to slam together, but I see now Lilith has also countered the spell <laughs> killing Fillion. Tangles breaks and the whole thing turns into dust. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, yes, sister Ageha. Um, I don't want to interrupt Becca's turn, uh, but I would love to suggest me after Becca. Okay, well, uh, we'll we'll go through it, but. Mecca, your arm is very slowly beginning to do the systems check to get itself back online. So that arm is currently out of commission. But as you are standing there, breathing heavily, the steam just coming off your body, you look up and you see Sister Ageha being crushed in one hand and the other hand coming directly down towards you. Not to grab you, but to slam you into the ground. What do you do? Sun Devison start time, because I know this is probably the perfect time to actually use it. Basically run past to get past the slam, to then jump onto the other hand, to bite one of the fingers to let go of Ageha. Well, that's going to be a big ask there, especially because your arm is currently out of commission. Is your wired reflexes thing powered also by your Argent energy, or is that something that's got its own power source? Uh, that has its own power source. Lucky. Um, let's make this a difficulty nine, then. On account of you not having your arm available, you flick the reflexes on and instantly everything starts moving slower around you. Difficulty 9 says, It's a king? Excellent. Pog. Champ. That is where we go. All right. Um... The like like cyborg zero zero nine just accelerate and everything stops. Mo too so slowly, and you dash to the side, scramble up the arm, run up across to the other side, reach down and sink your teeth into the thumb of the other hand. When you do so, you note very specifically that this thing is not made of wax. Oh, and dear God. Crunch, and you just try to tear back, and there is the sound of fabric tearing when you do. And when you spit out this chunk of what you tore, you look down and you see that inside, this thing is stuffed with cotton and straw and it's beginning to burn the okay, so time sort of anything. time sort of begins to speed back up for you and everyone else you can see like the the inside of this thing beginning to glow brighter and brighter and brighter and smoke starts to come out of it and it opens its mouth to scream again and a billow of smoke this black smoke belches out of it and it's with one hand empty and one hand with, like, pieces missing of it now. It tries to take the hand that has both Mecha and Ageha on or in it and jam it under the water. Uh-oh. But in doing so, the other shoulder erupts in this, like, red, black, silver, blue flame. 
And out of that eruption, the music begins to play, and you can hear it from inside. Miss Aoi's song just starting now to really wreak some havoc. Sister Ageha, you are currently being crushed and now submerged in the ice-cold water. Of course. Uh, I would like to do as all good clerics do, and I would like to rage. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I would you, like to you rage, reach into and... yourself. Go on. I am a wild magic barbarian. Oh my god, oh yes. Christ. Yes, let the rage flow through you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sister Ageha, do you happen to have your wild magic table available? Yes. It is a 1d8. Would you, would you kindly roll on your table for us, please? Yes. It's that is an, an eight. eight. Okay, what effect comes from your wild magic rage? A bolt of light shoots from my chest. Another creature of my choice that I can see within 30 feet must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant damage and be blinded. Dang. Well, well. For the rest Which of creature my rage, do you choose? Go on. For the rest of my rage, I can use that effect again. Jeez, all right. Each, each as a bonus action, but you know that tracks. All right. Uh, I, I think I might have the right idea, but which creature do you choose, Sister Aga? Yeah. Let's go. So one of the fingers has already been weakened, and Mecca, like the the, it's starting to plunge down into the water. As it's just getting under the water and you start to, like, back up the wrist, you see from inside this just sudden shining of radiant light that just bursts out of the water and slams directly into the queen's face Hog. and takes an entire portion of the left side of it with it. And out of that wound starts pouring straw and cotton. You are still technically being held under the water, though. Um, well, because was... you are raging, it will uh, be significantly easier for you to escape from this thing, which would mean that it's more difficult for the, the fist to keep you underwater. So in trying to keep you underwater, it's going to be difficulty 10. Wonderful. And that's a 10. Dang a ring. It just barely makes that. Bruh. It manages to keep pushing you under the water. And you can see, like, in the, the, like, the wound in it, that water is sort of pouring inside and beginning to waterlog the arm. And you can feel it start to lose grip a little bit on you. But now it's big and heavy holding you under that water. I need you to lose another edge, please. Mm hmm... I will lose... That's rough. I guess... No, I'm gonna lose my three of hearts. The, uh, the barbarian level, since I've basically... I've used my rage for the day, is how I'm justifying that. Alright. Let me just, uh, take care of those. You feel the rage in you burn for that moment, and you look up out of the water, and you can see through the surface of the water the the face of this creature, like, starting to fall apart as it does so. But it's pretty heavy, and you're still stuck under the surface. Lulls. Both of your arms are being held by these spiky teeth, but you still have access to the gun. As this is happening, and that the one that you blew a hole in is beginning to fall apart now, you look back and you see that there are three of them. A cube, a like a, a cylinder, and a 
ball that have stacked on top of each other and are like bounding towards you with the hope that the top one will be able to fall down on your head and encase it completely. What do you do? Well, I do not like the sound of that. Uh, are we going to assume that the shotgun was reloaded since then, or do I need to do anything like that? Or It's a reload. It's fine. Who cares? All right. Cool. I'm just making sure. Um, four barrels. We'll say that you have four shots with it. Three okay. now. Cool. Uh, so I'm just kind of hanging around at the moment with the uh, with my arms suspended, like... Um... What's below me directly? Uh, there is sort of like stone and and dirt down below you. You're at the very edge of the water. Okay. Um, do I see Agha get dragged under? Oh or yes, did I see? absolutely. Everyone, perhaps except for Ms. Aoi, sees this. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and do, and I'm assuming my sword's down there as well, is... Um, shoot out one of the arms holding me or holding me up in an attempt to get into the water on purpose okay uh yeah i mean it's it's like a big mouth that's kind of holding both of your arms so you can turn the gun and pull the trigger and blow off that portion of the mouth pretty easily mm -hmm. um let's say that this is a difficulty five it's probably not going to be that difficult for you knock on wood that's a six six of diamonds weren't you diamonds i am diamonds that's a critical success. What's it look like, Lulz? I so this time I'm going to continue trying to say the thing I was trying to say to sound cool, but uh, kind of choked up because we we're because bad stuff was going to happen. But I'm going to be like, <laughs> well, actually, no, I'll just say this one. So, I'm here to. I'm here to. Oh, uh, to. So they try to say something cool, and after racking their head for a little bit, as the, as the uh, creatures are getting closer, they're like, "Oh, to heck with it!" And then they just shoot, and then they uh, shoot out the face that's holding them together, to sending them or allowing them to fall directly into the water. Excellent. And meanwhile, saying. I'm coming, Agaha! And they're cut off, like, midway through saying that by the water, I'm assuming, filling your lungs, where they immediately think, Wait! I can't breathe water! <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before! I need to breathe! <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, Lols, you plunge into the water and immediately begin drowning. Excellent. Well, Lilith. The, yeah. uh, the wave of melted wax has hardened along the floor, and you see now on the one side of you the, like, gigantic radiant figure with the bow putting arrows into ones that are coming. And you look back and you see uh, Mecha running up the arm that is now suspended in the water and the, like, bolt of, wa of light that have come through it and, like, everything is happening all at once. And for just that second, you are distracted long enough that when you look back forward, there is a... It's like a, a pear shape kind of thing uh, that seems to be rolling forward, like, all kind of awkwardly, with the mouth open, and it seems like it's trying to catch you in the mouth and then continue to roll you down into the water. What do you do? Um... So this is... How many enemies are around? Yeah, it's like a maybe five or six feet tall pear-shaped thing rolling down towards you to try to catch you in the mouth. Okay, uh... Can I... I want to, like, the right wind under it, so it just kind of shoots up and over me. <laughs> Oh ho! Yeah, excellent. This is a single target instead of that huge one, so we'll make this difficulty five for you then. Okay. And it's a two of hearts. You are hearts, aren't you? I am. 
this would be a critical failure. Uh... I feel bot. <laughs> uh, it's five, you said? Correct. Difficulty five. All right, I have to use that one. That will do it, then. Yeah, uh, you reach down and pull the wind up from under it, and it, foof, goes over the top. Uh, but as it does so... Let's see. Uh, hey, Lulz. What's what, up? What, what thing did, uh, did Lilith just reveal about herself? In using this wind magic. Hmm. She's just real gassy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Real what? Real gassy. Yeah. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't think of anything negative to say about that, to be honest. Uh, but a secret. It doesn't have to be negative. Yeah, I'm trying to think it of just a, has secret. To be a secret. Just something we don't know. That's why I'm trying to think of. A secret that has to do with this spell in particular. Um, I'm I'm honestly drawing a blank right now, to be honest. You can throw it to me if you'd like. She was ta taking classes with the evocation teacher who teaches during Cosmos class. Ah, I'm gonna steal oh, night. I'm gonna steal was... uh, knights. All right, I'm gonna steal asters. She was taking Excellent. classes with the evocation teacher who teaches during Cosmos classes. Okay, that's the first bit. And then, Ms. Aoi, what is the and or but? Thank you, And she Esther. didn't do her homework to avoid living a paper. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Thank you, Knight. You are... You're 100% allowed to be helped. All right. So... Yeah, that makes sense. This is definitely an evocation spell that is uh, popular with the the like evocation kids right now. Um, Cosmo will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> but excellent, yeah. Um, the the thing tumbles over you in the air, splashes into the water, and continues like in that direction back out toward the mother. Excellent. Yeah, very nice. Uh, Mecca, you are on the arm that is being held underwater, just above the, the surface of the water, when you see, like, the bolt of light, and then you see lulls drop into the water and then immediately start drowning. What do you do? Save lulls? Because that's probably the next thing. Sorry, Argo. <laughs> that's fine. <how? laughs> If you attempt to save Amazing. Lulz, they're going to start yeah, pointing at Akka and say, Not me! Her! Save her! <laughs> well, if you're going after Lulz anyway, tell me how you'd like to do it. Uh, your uh... arm, by the way, at this point is now almost fully initiated again. You have control over it once more. Yeah, I can, I can swim properly. Um... Yeah. Yeah, because swimming lava in the demon world is a lot like swimming in water. I mean, water is probably at least a little bit more easy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so yeah, you begin swimming down towards Lulz. Uh, with your arm currently back, let's make this difficulty six. Boom! it's the queen of clubs. <laughs> So yeah, excellent. Very easy. You managed to get to Lulz uh, very quickly, uh, despite Lulz's saying otherwise, and force his head above the water for a moment. Lulz, that's weird. You can breathe for a second. <laughs> they just take very the nice. largest gasp of air ever, and they're like... Breathing sucks. How do you deal? How do you people deal with this? Goes back underwater without taking another breath. Darn it, <gasps> darn it, darn it. 
<laughs> no, uh, you manage to catch your breath, and now the two of you are there at the water and are able, perhaps, to do something about Sister Ageha. But, Miss Aoi... Yes. You feel... Well, hang on. I need to make a draw for Finian here. Uh-oh. It's going to be difficulty seven, I think. It's a jack. The laugh jack. You feel a moment pass before some fingers wrap around your hand. And when you look up, it's Finian. He's got his his concert light in one hand and is grasping your hand with the other. And he looks down at you and he says, N now, now it's my time to protect you. Let's go. Come on, up on your feet. Uh-oh. Right. So, I stand up and I, I, I take, I, I use my second hand to hold his, his the hand he's using to hold my, my hand. And I look again mm -hmm. and he, his eyes and I'm and, and I tell him you've been amazing until now but I think I really need to save everyone so can you stay with me there is a like the the briefest moment where like if he was red before he is like <laughs> <crazy> <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> and he like wordlessly he just kind of like very very subtly shakes his head yes all right this is what i want to do now i want to i want to uh, do the song again but i want to make it the highest possible like uh like i want to make it the hottest possible Oh ho! All right. Like, and you I'm not telling take like that deep breath. Yeah. Okay. Go on. No, I was saying I was gonna say I'm not telling uh, saying the hardest possible without me dying. I'm saying the hardest possible. Period. All right. We're carrying it up to ten then. You take a breath and you focus your eyes on the queen, and. You begin the song once more. Uh, the, the, the Walkman on the inside seems to have burned out now, and you can see the black smoke beginning to billow from inside of it, and you, you see, like, parts of the thing from the inside begin to burn outwards, and the head turns back and looks at you just as you begin that song again. This is going to be difficulty queen. Bruh. <laughs> oh, God. Ooh. Here we go. Bruh. It's the oh! Eight of Hearts. <laughs> Ms. Aoi. We need four more. Need Do you have a four more. or higher in your hand? Uh, there's nothing I can do. But I want to remind you that I've been uh, blessed with a spell. Yes, you have. Will not allow me to die. <laughs> so, you begin the song, and as you are doing so, you feel your voice begin to crackle in your throat, and you reach out with one hand and just hold it up, and the energy that pours out of you is immense and you feel now that heat from inside of you that same heat that has killed so many of your predecessors begin to radiate and the fire that is inside of this thing already seems now to have reached the shoulder of the arm that is underwater and it disconnects Sister Ageha, you feel the fingers start to loosen and you begin to sink with the hand. As this is happening, the, the head kind of like leans back and you see all of the, the, the stuffing begin to fall out of it and the mouth opens wide and fire, white hot fire suddenly envelops the entire creature all at once. And it begins to scream. And the 
the fire just from inside of your voice pours out of your mouth and you feel it and you know right now this is right about when you would go this is when you would be finished but then a coolness and when you look down to the hand that you are holding Finian's hand, you see just very briefly the ghostly apparition of Sister Ageha's hand there as well. And you feel a pulse of healing. Aww. And your voice repairs just enough to finish the song. The creature just in a flash, the entire outside of it, up in smoke, everything that's left inside is this mass of writhing wax and stuffing and straw that begins to fall apart and boil into the water. And as it falls apart, you see, coming down, a single human skull that drops into the water and begins very slowly to sink. Sister Ageha, you force yourself out of the fingers and break... You, like, you look over and you see now there are two of your colleagues that are swimming down to catch you. You reach up and you grab one of each of their hands and the three of you surface. You spit around a lot of water out of your out of your lungs. Uh, Lulz, you also have to spit up quite a lot of water. This is still new for you. Uh, Mecca, you like open up the little ports on your arm and let all of the water out of it. Yeah. Lilith, you with the like the fire in both hands are about to let out this se this another wave of that that horrifying hellfire to take the, the the horde that is coming along, but as soon as you are about to, they all suddenly stop and tumble into dust. Excellent. Miss Aoi, there is a scar on your throat. Oh. In the shape of a music note. A burn scar. But it's just a scar. Your voice is a little gravelly, a little dry, a little hot. But you're fine. I'm alive. Let's get you some Finian... milk. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some milk. Uh, <laughs> Finian lets go of your hand and looks at it. And there is a burn on his hand as well in the shape of your fingers grasping his hand. And he Aww. looks at it, and he looks back up at you. And there's like the teeniest little bit of a smile before he goes, ow, 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 and he puts it in the water. Such a cutie. <laughs> and then... <laughs> everything pauses for a moment. And you find yourself a little dizzy. And then things begin to swirl. And when the light comes back, you find yourself back in the lecture hall. There is raucous applause. Every student in the in the class right now is like standing up, clapping, they're throwing their notebooks up. Everyone is so excited about it. And the professor stands there as well. Uh, he, he's got like some notes at the podium and he just kind of taps the notes and sets them down. And he looks at the, the class and holds up a hand and everyone quiets down and he goes, So students, you've seen now exactly how the best of us plan on their feet. You've seen improvisation. You've seen exceptional use of the skills that they have learned here and in other places. 
And then he turns back to the notes and he holds up a clipboard. Let's go ahead and score. Well, well. Uh, as he turns the clipboard around, there is a big 16 written on it. And he says, Congratulations! The five of you have gotten the highest score on any exam we have had to date. I am very impressed. Uh, and at that point, like, a bunch of the students, like, sort of surge forward and they begin, like, shaking your hands and, like, moving you back and forth like they do at the end of sports games when you have done a good job. Where's Finian? <laughs> Uh, Ms. Aoi, this is going to be difficulty nine for you. <laughs> oh, no. It's a four. The four of diamonds. You look around, and you don't see Finian with you. Can, can I look for Finian? Can we all look for Finian? Well, what you do note... However, Ms. Aoi, is that by the exit door to the classroom, it is on its way shutting. And you see just the briefest little glimpse of the edge of a penguin hoodie as they slip out of the classroom. Why? But by this time now, everyone is crowded around you and is like high fives and handshakes and it is the highest score that anyone, any group has gotten on a practical exam as of yet. The professor sets gonna... his... Go on. I'm just gonna collapse on the floor due to exhaustion. I'm like, <laughs> someone give me some energy! <laughs> I have a thousand uh, yard stare on my face. The Bowser yeah, it amiibo. Seems like... Sorry. You Go first. On. No, you first. It seems like everyone has uh, the, the physical status of someone who is completely fine, but the mental status of someone who has just gone through some stuff. Lulz. The Bowser amiibo is just kind of chill. It's just like chilling in place where it was left. But somewhere in chat, you see the other versions of Lulz who were all expecting this one to get killed like within the first few minutes, <laughs> who are just shocked still. And the only one of them that's clapping is Lulz Comfy because they're nice like that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, when when the professor goes back and checks the, the chat logs from those who were watching the class from remote, they see that most of the exclamation point goods and exclamation point bads come from different lulzes. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, the professor picks up the Bowser uh, amiibo, dusts it off a little bit, and sets it back on the edge of the, of the desk. And he says... I didn't expect you to, to go along, but, well, I'm glad you did. And you didn't get shot this time, either. <laughs> this time, it was you doing the shooting. So, congratulations, my dear friends, Ms. Lilith, Lulz, Mecca, Sister Ageha, and Ms. Aoi. You passed the exam. Can I go around How to much? Finian, now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ms. Aoi, you, you slip through the crowd and open the door, but it's been about 45 seconds or so now, and the hallway is empty. It's okay, run around. No worries. <laughs> I'm just gonna look for him. No, no, no issues. Miss Aoi disappears from the, ho the, the classroom and finds herself wandering about the tower for a little while. In the meantime, <laughs> however many... I swear to God, Lilith, I'm going to set you on fire. <laughs> however many of those secrets that we just uh, revealed there were actually true, well, we may never know. 
But the camera zooms out and then kind of pans across each of you. And as the credits begin rolling, the after credit scene about 45 seconds into the into the black credit black screen credits shows I see do I still have the map for this up actually? Are you? Knowledge vault, the sacrificial scrying pool, Swan Temple, the Butcher Tree map. Is this the one? No, I don't what? think this is the right one. Uh blast. I don't know if I have the the right thing anymore. That's a shame. Alright, well. Um at the very center of the student union building, there is an atrium where a statue of Mistra, the goddess of magic, stands. And she is holding the... like a, a, a pitcher that's pouring water out into a pool around her. And the camera zooms out from that to, to show the back of a penguin hoodie. You only see the sleeve. And then the door to the atrium opens and you see Miss Aoi step inside. And then as the screen goes black, you just hear Miss Aoi? And that's the end of the session. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we stay winning. We got the best ending. We stay winning. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, um, oh, amazing. I also had some. Uh, the deck I pulled was also kind of overpowered, and I didn't get to use any of it because we didn't need to. So, yeah, it was lucky. Um, y'all ended up not really needing to use much in the way of your your edges which is uh abnormal because most of the time you the, the people who play this game pull cards like garbage and really need to do like better things for themselves mm -hmm. uh, so i'm i'm very happy that you guys managed to get through it without dying even a little bit well m mostly not dying a little bit I'm very impressed. That, that early game death ward really came in clutch. Mm -hmm. Oh, it did though. Yeah, no, that that worked out exceptionally well, and it was so just like dramatic and and narratively cool as well. This is one of those you things. Cannot make this stuff up. This is one of those things that you yeah. just cannot plan around, and when it happens, it's like wow. It's magic. <laughs> it is magic. magic. Oh yeah. I'm I'm very pleased with this. I hope that you all had a good time. Yes. It was a great time yes. held by all. It was a nice so, edition are also. Really, are you really going to evocation classes? Uh um. Choose your words carefully, Miss Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've played the fair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, wonderful. This is very good. Um, so, if any of these things are things that you would like to d d incorporate into your lore, of course, feel free to do so. Mm -hmm. I would have no, no problems with any of that. Uh, but in the meantime, Ms. Lilith, what are you going to yeah. be doing next? And where can we find you doing it? Um... I'm going to be playing something, streaming sometime this weekend. Excellent. I don't know if that'll be today or tomorrow. I sorry. <laughs> hey, well, we'll we'll go for it. Um, would those in the chat be so cool as to do the exclamation point shout out or exclamation point s o uh, for the people in in the order that we give them? Uh, so uh, exclamation point s o Lilith underscore Bellamira, please. Excellent. Uh, Lulz, what about you? What are you doing? Where can we find you? Um, I am still slowly getting back into streaming. I decided to edit my VODs manually this time, which is why it's taking a while for them to get re-uploaded to YouTube. But the next collab that I'm going to be streaming is actually going to be literally a week from now on the 18th with a uh, different group of people. That's also going to be a role-playing game, I think. Um, so yeah, we'll be streaming Excellent. around that evening on the 18th. I'll post, I'll make up another... Uh, cringy 
webcomic to post on various social media announcing that, I'm sure. To be cringe is to be free. Your work was amazing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well done. Excellent. I'm, I'm excited to see it then. Uh, what about you, Mecca? What are you doing? Where can we find you? Um, obviously, in, with, currently, at this moment in time, I'm going through my grading for my martial arts for my third degree black belt, which oh, yeah. I've been granted to double grade. Yo! So we were hoping that that go, would happen. Yes. So Hand I'm claps. actually going to fully double grade, um, which I'm proud of that. I'm more likely going to be going through Warframe and Bowl Escapes, since obviously the season finale for Destiny 2 is currently over. For season 22, we can move on to the next 23, which is on to the 28th. And I've got to do a bunch of night waves in Warframe. There will be probably be a Bowl Escape playthrough, but not by Human Rogue. Instead, I'm going to play another modded playthrough as a Dragonborn Artificer. Ooh, what a, what, what a little choice there. Excellent. Well, we will be happy to see you doing those things, Mecha, and congratulations on the double level up, by the way. Yes. Uh, Sister Ageha, what about you? What are you doing? Where can we find you? You can find me at uh, on Twitch under the name Ageha Verkor. You can find me on Twitter under the same name. Uh, currently, I am playing a lot of Baldur's Gate with my friend Chuffy or uh, Storyteller NPC, as she is also known. Uh, if you tune in, uh, Cinnamon actually features in the game. Well, well. Yeah, uh, that's some heavy, heavy lore drop business that just happened there, wasn't it? <laughs> mm. Perhaps it looks if you directly ask at me, the camera. Perhaps if you ask me sometime about my old arena days, I'll tell you. I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an appealing thing to definitely do. Uh, so thank you then as well. Ms. Aoi, what about you? What are you doing? Where can we find you? Uh, so I'm going on break. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, excellent. So for a few weeks, because I am turning adult, so until my adult form is completely finished, uh, I I need to, you know, focus on this because it is a important part of a penguin life. The moment you you become an adult, but I will invite everyone to come join me at uh, my becoming an adult party, uh, aka the Ao Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love uh, our evolution. I love it. Oh, evolution. Amazing. Well, wonderful. Uh, I'm very excited to see all of that happen as well. Night Gardenia, you have a raid target to suggest. Uh, does anyone who is participating in the in the collab have a raid target first before we take those suggestions? Uh, mm -hmm. Let me no, see no, no, who's no, online. Yeah, give me a second. See. There's uh, quite a, people, a lot I've of people got, streaming. Oh, you, yeah, you know who we could do? We could raid Lulz. Lulz is playing a tabletop RPG. Or we could raid Mecha, who is also <laughs> playing a tabletop RPG. Um, we could <laughs> we could raid another, another Magic user who was the first person that I ever joined a collab with. Uh, if, if you've heard of them, Professor Tetsuo VT. That's my possible Tetsuo choice. What about everyone else? Uh, I actually, yet. I... I actually have a close friend of mine that I see at the London Comic Con called W Plays TV. They kind of got two viewers right now, and they're playing Dead by Daylight. Ooh. Hey, Dead by Daylight doesn't sound bad, and with only two viewers, that we can we can definitely change those numbers, couldn't we? Mm -hmm. Does that sound oh, yes. okay? All right, excellent. Professor, your turn. Uh, your turn. What yes, are you doing? Yes, 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 What's I going know. on what you in, in in the professor's life? Tell us. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Heck. All right. Uh, so of course, you guys know where I'll to post find me. The name I'm in at... the chat. There we go. I appreciate it. It's I'm Cosmo Bergamot everywhere. If I have an account there, it's always Cosmo Bergamot. No underscores or anything necessary. Um, Monday afternoon, as long as the stars do not fall again, uh, I should be in to do some mini painting for the Ooh. first time in a little while since we've had the new the new setup. Uh, so we'll be painting some more Gloomhaven minis unless bad things happen, at which point we won't. But we will see. So yeah, uh, thank you everyone so much. Um, where is the the name here? Is in the 
It's in the text chat in Here. on the side for the collabs. Excellent. That's Dobby Plays TV. D O B B Y Plays TV. Where is All that? Right, well, let's go and see them then. Okay. Uh, I think actually Mecca, you DM'd it to me directly. Oh, it says yeah, here I'm Dobby Plays TV. Okay. Dobby yes, Plays Dobby TV. Too. Kaboom! Yeah. Like so. Uh, this channel is intended for mature audiences. Oh boy. Perfect. So I mean, it's uh, set by you know. daylight. So. <laughs> yeah, that that makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, wonderful then. Uh, I hope that everyone had a really good time playing today. I would love to have all of you at my table once again. Um, this is like an all-star team of, of tabletop role-playing game players, and I'm always happy to have everyone here. Uh, we will see everyone again sometime soon. Do not forget, everybody, to do your homework. Do your homework. And we need a raid message, don't do we? Your, raid do your message. homework. The raid message uh, should be do your homework. And the the, red mess, uh, the the homework is to go sliding in the snow, okay? And eat a blue ice cream. No, the very no, the very best is uh. The 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 there we go. Live long, <laughs> Live long and prosper. Excellent. What's it right? Uh, I've got a raid message in mine. Everyone else, if you're doing whatever you're doing, then take that one as well. But we will go and see uh, our our friend Dubby plays D plays TV. Then, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Do your homework. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye, -bye. bye. And that is the end of that. Hit that raid, and then we'll come over here and go. Dobby plays TV. The invasion is Excellent. real. Let's go and bother them. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, and then Mecca, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Mecca, we will. We will. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm disappointed. Wonderful. But it's okay. uh, all right. Well, y'all who y'all who have to. All right. Uh, okay, I'm I'm heading out then. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Right. I'll go home. Bye. I need to steal you. Yeah.